table is talking to you. Watchtower having a clue. JW's falling like flies. Waking up from the years of the lies. The round table is talking to you. Clearing the way so you can leave too. You're watching Round the Table, where we discuss the Watchtower, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and how they're falling apart around the world. Stick around for some truths. Enjoy the reality only at Round the Table. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I have again with me Jimmy and Deasis for another Round Table. If you saw the last one, it was the ambush video where Jimmy was ambushed by two elders and did a phenomenal job of debating with and dealing with them. And something happened after they left a little while later, and I'm going to let Jimmy tell us about that. Yeah, uh, a week after they had come by the house, I got a text on a Friday morning from the coordinating body of elders. And he was asking if it would be okay if him and the circuit overseer could come by and visit me that day at one o'clock. And I said, of course. So what I did is I went into town, went to Lowe's, and I got one of those signs that says, warning, surveillance, 24 hours. Oh, good idea. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I put that up so that they would realize that when they walked down my driveway, they could see this sign and be like, hey, this guy's got some security cameras around here. Right. So then what I did is I took my iPad and set it up on the table that we were getting ready to talk, had the chairs already set up. And so I was getting everything ready for them for their visit and to make sure I was going to get it recorded. Um, they got there. And as soon as the CEO got out of the car, he was like, wow, what a beautiful place you have here. Can I go down and check out that water? Because I, I live right next to a lake. And so one thing that I noticed what this guy was doing right away was he was trying to build rapport with me by complimenting something in my area, in my surroundings. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get on the same level, you know, kind of like when you used to go out in field service, or when I used to go door to door for insurance sales, you pick something in that person's yard just to say, hey, those are, you know, that's, you're a Duke fan. Oh, yeah, we did do that. We yeah, used to, yeah, yeah, they would tell you, try to find something that you Take could talk interest. about. Yeah, to, yeah. Yeah. So it was a tactic. Yes, yes. Yeah. It was gotcha. like kind of a gotcha. break the ice tactic that mm -hmm. he was using. And I recognized it immediately. Right. So I was like, all right, this is how this is going to play out. All right. So they came back up from the water and we sat down and we started talking. And the first thing that we were talking about was the visit that I had the week before about the elders coming. And I mentioned to the coordinating body of elders that uh, they didn't have a lot of answers to my questions and I didn't get anything really resolved. And he said, and I took notes to make sure that I keep up with everything because there was a lot in this upcoming video. But uh, the elders said that they were not equipped to answer the questions. Wait, the elders said they weren't The equipped? coordinating body of the elders said <laughs> that these two elders were not equipped to answer the question. The people running why the show. They, then why are they elders? Shouldn't the elders of all people be equipped to answer the basic questions about Watchtower history you were asking? You would think. About? And again, this is your leadership. Yes, this is your leadership. You, yeah, yeah, you would think. So I told the... And we're just going to call him the elder and the circuit overseer. I told them that I was looking for answers and I just, they didn't help me out at all. I also told them that I was depressed and upset. And uh, I sensed that I needed to use a different tactic with these two. Mm -hmm. All right. Because in the elder ambush video, I went on the attack um, because it had been seven months of all this research and I had never had a chance to go toe to toe with an elder or somebody like that. So I did go on the attack. And so, yeah, that was still enjoyed it. It was really it wasn't fun. wasn't what you thought it'd be, was it? Huh? <laughs> was that? I said, it wasn't what you thought it would be. Oh, no, no. It was more like, of a shh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was great. It, it, was it wasn't easy. really a battle. It was more like a beat down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I decided to do something different with this one. And you know, in the elder video, the one elder said, well, that's what education will get you. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I did. Um, with me being in sales, 
I have The Secrets of Closing the Sale by Zig Ziglar. Of course. It's a great book. Right. Oh, and in education. The, yes, mm-hmm. here we go, education. So in this book, there's a chapter called uh, Objections are Consistent, Objectors Aren't. And basically what this chapter talks about is that there's different styles of people when you go to try to sell folks or you even try to talk to folks. There's different styles. Right. So, for example, you have Gary Gullible, which will just accept anything. Uh, Sydney Skeptical, you, you, no matter what you say, they're always, ah, I don't get it. But the CO, he fell into the category Bobby Big Shot. <laughs> That's a good description that. for this guy. Okay. So, the paragraph that describes what big, who Bibby, uh, Bobby Big Shot is, um, keep in mind this is a sales book, So, but for the purpose of the sake of the argument, it works. It says, he wants to feel important, so by all means make him feel important. He wants to be on center stage, so let the spotlight shine on him. By the same token, he likes to know he is not dealing with one of the boys, but rather someone who is qualified to handle his account. If you've set a few sales records or if you've accomplished something significant, work it in in a non-threatening way so Mr. Big will know he's dealing with someone who's qualified to handle such an important person. Wow. So what I did is after I told them I was depressed and upset, um, I ended up acting like a little wounded sheep that needed help mm-hmm. from this wonderful CEO. And uh, so I didn't go on the attack. I wanted him to be able to do most of the talking. Yeah. And so that's that's the route I took on this one. Well, that makes sense. And I could, I could just see the circuit overseer come to me, Jimmy, who is loaded down. <laughs> it really gives off that vibe in this video. I, you I, guys are going to see that. I so. really try to play that up good because I knew that if I did that, it would uh, he would just feel comfortable yeah. and just start talking a lot. Well, that was really smart and it really worked. So let's go ahead and watch the first clip because like we did with the Elder Ambush video, we're going to go through each clip a piece at a time and then talk about it. So let's roll the first one. Might as well get right into it. Um, Uh, I'll tell you before you get started. I might not even have the answers for you. Right now. That's fine. That's so, fine. I don't. I'll care. do my best. And if I can't get you an answer now, I'll look into it. That's all I want because I, I mean, honestly, truly, up until December, I want. I mean, well, let me rephrase that. I want what I've been taught to be true. Mm-hmm. If it's true, I move forward with that. Mm-hmm. If there, if it's something's not true and it doesn't make sense to me. It makes it very difficult for me to go forward. Sure. You know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. All right. So, and I don't expect you guys to have the answers because I know that when we're out in field service and someone asks us a question, hey, I'll look that up and I'll get back with you. Right. Mm -hmm. I I completely understand that. Yeah. So, but I guess the first thing I wanted to address that I've not been able to get an answer for is the Watchtower's involvement with the UN Mm -hmm. from 92 to 2001. Do you guys know anything about that? Well, I know that, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, please. We're, we're, we're still involved with the UN. Yeah. Wow. Why? Well, I'll give you an example. I worked in the legal department at Bethel. Okay. And um, we had a convention in Kazakhstan in 2017, summer 2017. And uh, two weeks before the convention, Kazakhstan government breaks into the, the branch there. Guns are blazing. I mean, not blazing, not firing, but machine guns, whole nine yards. Show of force, heavily influenced, obviously, by the old Soviet <coughs> Union, as you can imagine. And um, we're about to send, I don't know, 2,500 delegates into that country. Right. You know? And so, um, that's a lot of money that we're going to infuse into a, a small little country, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, we talked to UN ambassadors. Um, we need to we need to make sure that if we're going to we're vouching for the safety. Like this year, we have how many international conventions? There's um, several. Year, Twenty. So, you know, for example, uh, 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 Sister uh, Matthews and her daughter mm-hmm. are at a convention in Brazil. In Brazil, we had to vouch for their safety. I mean, imagine, you know, if I said, uh, if I sent you, we're out in the territory, right, and we're mm-hmm. in Charlotte, 
that sent you into a bad neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. You know, all by yourself. Yeah, I'm being. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, there'd be a responsibility on my part. So yeah, there. I mean, to a certain extent, we have evolved in the government. You know. Well, I appreciate and, and that. United, and the United Nations. You're the first person that I've talked to that's actually come out and said something like that. And mm -hmm. I can understand the safety issues. Um, when I, and, of course, I did, when I found that out, of course, I wanted to, oh, my goodness, what is this? Let me do some research. And then I just found out that they were listed, they, they joined the U.N. in 92 as a, an accredited NGO. And being an accredited NGO means that they have to... Um, pretty much back up with the UN is oh. teaching well, or, or promoting. I don't know about that. I, I don't know about that. And yeah. and the reason that I, I found out the reason, the Watchtower's reason for that was they said that they needed to have access to the UN library. Oh, yeah. So that right there, yeah. that kind of, I, I didn't know about the whole, what you just told me, mm -hmm. but that's what I was told was, or that's what I found out. That and, and, the, and the sketchy thing was October 8th of 2001 in the Guardian newspaper out of England it actually said that Jehovah's Witnesses were involved with the UN and then on the very next day Watchtower cancels their membership mm -hmm. and that looks kind of it kind of looks like you got your hand stuck in the cookie jar um, but as a rank and file witness it just kind of looks bad mm -hmm. because, you know, during well, the... I'll say this. Go ahead. There's probably been no one, no bigger expose, organization that exposes the UN and false religion and governments today than Jehovah's people. I mean, that's, that's why 170-some thousand of them are under ban in Russia right now. Yeah, I, I understand that. And, and, never, and never for drawing a gun or for protesting. Right. Just... Just for exposing, a matter of fact, I mean, even in the even in the forties, right? I mean, we we predicted the UN would exist. No one else did, right? And you can and you can and you and you don't have to go to a, any website to check that. That's just that's just common common knowledge that you know we knew the League of Nations would go and we they would rise again. Yeah, they came out on the United Nations, and of course, we identify the United Nations with. With the beast and the Book of Revelation, that they are that they're part. Well, see, of, that's what was that, that they're, they're part of Satan's system. Of that's things. that's what really bothered me, though, because you know during the '90s we studied the Revelation <coughs> book three times, and we were, you know, told that mm -hmm. the UN is part of Satan's system, yeah. and so it's like, why did we get involved? You know, we can't. We're not supposed to vote. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to get involved in any political. We're supposed to say neutral. Well, mm -hmm. and that's what that means. What, what did you call the acronym for? NGO, for accredited NGO, non-governmental yeah. organization. Right, non-governmental oh. organization. So, like if I had to apply, if I wanted to go to a court somewhere that was a closed court, like a Supreme Court, I would have to find a way legally to be there. I'd even have to be a representative or on a committee seeing what's going on there. So in order for us to have access to what's going on all over the world and just sit and listen to what's happening and send representatives, there's gotta, there has to be a way that you would have to apply for that. Me and you can walk into the UN and watch their meetings. Oh, no, absolutely not. Yeah. So it makes sense to me just from that viewpoint. I don't know about the legality of helping other friends. And, see, but. and, and that's fine. You know, those that are educated enough to know those legal things, mm -hmm. they, can, they can understand that. But for mm -hmm. your everyday pioneer, publisher, they don't know that stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't know it, and, and so I'm all, sure the branch... So all they see is Watchtower tied in with the UN. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've never heard anybody say that, though. You're I the first either. person I've ever heard say that. Uh, there's a lot of people that have... But even, really. even, even at that, and even, and even with that being said, mm -hmm. um, you know, our old, the old Gilead classes, they would tour the UN. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many? How I wonder how many witnesses know what you just told me that they were still involved with the UN right now. Well, they they, they talk to their ambassadors there because we're larger. You have to understand that Jehovah's Witnesses. If we were a sovereign state, <coughs> we'd be top one hundred in the world. Oh yeah, I've actually done the math on that. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we're bigger than Switzerland, and 
I mean, so we, you know, we have a lot of interests, you know, in a lot of countries. So, so yeah, we have a, we're always, we're, I mean, we, I mean, we're, we're chronicled as far as how we fight in the European Court of Human Rights, how we fight in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. We prefer not to go that route because, you know, we, we basically just win mm -hmm. in, um, in those in those cases. I mean, we never lost in front of the Supreme Court except right. for once. Right. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court retracted their own decision. Right. That's embarrassing. We, we try to save them embarrassment. But can, but can you see why... Just can, can you see why it just looks bad? No, I don't... I, to, I, to, I, I don't to someone I that doesn't know the legal stuff. But it would, to me, it would be different if they were making decisions um, with the UN, but to lobby for help from the UN is makes no, it's the same thing as you walking up to again right a supreme court judge saying i need you to help me in this case mm -hmm. this is wrong or even and you have to have an opening yeah. or, or even, a, or even a government you know we you know yeah. we petition governments matter of fact the bible even tells us to pray for them mm -hmm. oh yeah. yeah yeah of course you know Jehovah so that our work that can place. go in so our work can go in peace yeah. yeah so really that's kind of aligned with the scriptures that we should try to work with them and mm -hmm. and if we're even right. praying for them according to timothy well, that gives me a different their relative position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they and those positions are put in the posi they're put in those positions of power, or allowed to be in those positions of power by by Jehovah God. Right. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. And so. All right. Well, that gives me some food for as thought. Far, as far as that extra stuff, I, I can't speak on that. What was the NGO? It was. The, they were. They were listed as an accredited NGO, and you have to look at what an NGO is supposed to do for the UN mm -hmm. um, and then the whole removing their membership a day after the article came out yeah, that just kind of looks sketchy I mean and I'll, be honest and, 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 looks, and, I'll, and I'll be honest too I'd have to know the credit on that uh, yeah you know you have to check you have it to out look at the viability if, if and you, for me if you want to get back with me on it that's cool no I for me I, I just kind of feel that uh, uh, the organization is transparent I mean, you can go onto the Watchtower Online Library or any of our devices, and you can look at all the beliefs that we've we were wrong about. Right. I mean, we have videos that admit how wrong we were on on things. You know, we are not infallible. We. Well, yeah, I was going to touch. We, I was going to touch on that we, in we, a second. We. I think both of us would be the first one to admit that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. we just there's been mistakes, absolutely. And even when they change some things that we don't understand the benefit for, we, in our mind, are like, oh, man, how is this going to go over? Yeah. But then two, three years later, we're like, that's the best thing that's ever yeah. happened. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> that well, happens all the time. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. I, so with that, I, I, I guess, you know, I, I guess, you know, I, I don't even know if I would have to research those things just because you know I, I know that we're going to petition any secular authority on behalf of Jehovah's people right you know and I don't I don't personally believe that uh, we would have an involvement with the UN where we're padding our coffers or anything like that that I mean we there's no one that is a, a bigger I don't want to say critic but that uh, paints the UN for what the Bible describes them as, that, than Jehovah's people. I don't even know if they want our money. <laughs> I mean, you know that, that that that'd be like that'd be like a well, one that'd be like Duke fan donating to North Carolina, well, you know, thing, or North Carolina donating to Duke. You well, one, know, one thing that I did find out, and and this might be something you could look at just to set my mind at ease, is that when you do become an accredited NGO, you need to speak nicely of the, the UN and. If you look back at some of the articles in the 90s in the Watchtower, there was positive remarks made about the U.S. <coughs> I don't have them in front of me right now, but if need be, I can show them to you and you can help me out with it and say, hey, Jimmy, this is what the society meant on this. And, well, and so, I mean, from my experience, I mean, the Revelation book, which came out in the 80s and we studied it three times in the 90s, no. was the biggest blast on the UN of any publication that's probably ever come out. Well, see, that's why it was so shocking to me to find out what I did. Yeah. Because I was like, wow. Because I didn't know all the legal stuff to it. Mm -hmm. But, so, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. That's just, and that's just, you know, that's just one, that's just one example. And like I said, I can't speak to, to all those things, nor do I know the legalities of it. But I, I do know that these government 
facilities, these governments themselves are put into place to, yeah, they, to protect human rights. Yeah. To, um, I mean, in the 70s, I'll give you an example. In 19, I, I'm not sure how old you were or when you came into the truth. I'm 46, and okay. I'm, so I, I, I know the history. Okay. And, you know, you couldn't, uh, we, we couldn't well. be in the same building as a black person. Oh, yeah. You know, as a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. You know? I mean, so there was a lot, there's been a lot of yeah. legalities, legal fights that we had to go down. You know? Right. Um, and we appealed to the to Caesar, just like Paul did. Yeah. And okay. He appealed to Caesar, too, as a Roman citizen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. all right, well, that helps me out a little bit on that one. I appreciate that. Okay, well, the first thing I want to say before we discuss this is the reason why you don't see the faces in the video is we got legal counsel in advance and we were advised not to have any faces showing, which is, it's a shame that it has to be that way because if you could see the looks on these guys' oh, yeah. faces, the very condescending, especially on the circuit over here, yeah. the very condescending look, well, let me tell you, yeah. little sheep, how it is, <laughs> you know? He's very condescending, and I wish you could see that, but you can hear it in his voice, too, yeah. and by the things he says. So let's, let's break this down, let's go through it. Jimmy, why don't you start us off? Well, you know, the first thing I asked him was, uh, why, is Watchtower, why did Watchtower have involvement with the UN? from 1992 to 2001. And he hemmed and hauled a little bit, as we heard in the video. But then he said, uh, to us, uh, we're still involved with the UN. Yes, we're still, I mean, he just flat out said it. Yeah. We're still involved. We're still involved. Still involved with the UN. And then he tries to justify the, it. the justification is what gets to me. Oh, because yeah. he talks about a convention <laughs> in Kazakhstan in 2017. And he says, we had 2,500 delegates going to this country and they raided the branch with all their weapons and blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, if they did that, one, why are you still sending 2,500 delegates to the country? Okay, that's, that's my first question. But then he says, they had to go ask the UN for help, okay, and we'll get into it later, but he, he admits, yeah, Watchtower teaches that the United Nations is part of Satan's system of things. So you just went to Satan for help with your delegates in another part of Satan's system of things. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And what the other thing is true about the, Yes. <laughs> The other thing that strikes me, strikes me about the Kazakhstan thing, he doesn't say we're sending 2,500 people and we need to make sure that they're all okay. The first thing he says is we're sending 2,500 delegates and that's a lot of money. Did you catch that? No, I didn't catch it. He says that's a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Now, he does talk about their protection and blah, 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 but the first thing he talks about is how expensive it is to send 2,500 delegates. So they go to the UN, they go to Satan for help, for protection, for the money it's going to cost them to send people to Kazakhstan. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yes. so, yeah. few things here. No matter how you slice it, or no matter how he tries to slice it, they're still involved with Babylon the Great. They're still involved. It doesn't matter. They're still touching the unclean thing. And there's just, there's no way around that. Um, one of the first things also that I noticed about the video, and uh, I'm not sure if this was in the clip or not, but um, they said that the elders were not equipped right. to yeah. deal with that. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you think about equipping someone, in other words, this information has not been given to them to know. Why is that? Is it because maybe it would discourage the elders? Is it because maybe once they heard that, mm -hmm. they would say, whoa, you know, this corruption <laughs> is through the roof. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. so, and that yeah. comes up later, too. Yeah. Uh, they, when you bring up that, oh, well, regular publishers, pioneers don't know this stuff. And the elder admits, yeah, they don't know this stuff. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah, they don't know this stuff. <laughs> They're but, not equipped. Okay, and I have a lot to say about that. But before we get in, into that section, the circuit overseer then tries to illustrate 
the Kazakhstan thing. But same with Jimmy. It's like if I sent you into a bad neighborhood for field service, you know, and <clears throat> that I'm, I'm liable basically <laughs> for sending you into the hood. And when he said that, first of all, I'm like, okay, well, that would be true if you didn't teach that the angel in mid heaven is supposed to be watching over people wow. when they're in the ministry. That's a good point. You know, wow. that's yeah. what they, well, the angels are watching over us while we're out in service. Well, then why are you worried about sending them into the hood? Wow. Do you, what, you think God can't take on the Crips? I mean, seriously, are you really worried about <laughs> They've that? They've been killed out in field service. Yes, people have. Yeah. How is it possible yeah. that people die in field service if the angels are watching over? So that just tells yeah. me that people like the CO, they speak out of both sides of their mouth. On the one side, they want to call Satan's system. You know, the UN is part of Satan. The government's part of Satan. Babylon the Great's all Satan, Satan, Satan. But then on the other hand, Pragmatically, they know that as an organization, you're not going to be protected if you don't work with these groups. Yeah, I mean, he was—he literally said out of his mouth, uh, "We identify the UN as the beast. Yep. They mm -hmm. are part of Satan's system of things. Mm -hmm. However, we use them. Yeah, but we're going to ask for their help." Yeah, there was uh, another point um, that I was thinking of too, and this is. This is not incredibly related, but this is something that I thought of because the CEO said it. And it's something that I think all of us witnesses uh, said at some point, and it's probably something that a lot of you witnesses out there say. Um, when they say they'll look into it, if you notice the CEO said, we will look into it. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Yep, he did. Yep. This was our... Um, buffer that we would use went out in field service to get the hell out of there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did not answer a question <laughs> yeah. because we knew we couldn't. Because you know, maybe there was even a part of us that knew we were wrong. Mm -hmm. So we would say, "Oh, well, you know, we'll look into it," and that's kind of a way of evading. So and you know, he he, went, he, he also went in and said. I don't even know if I would have to research those things. Yeah, at the end, he yeah. finally says, "I don't even know if I'd have to research." You know what? Oh, what infuriates me about <laughs> what he not? says. Before he says that, he says, I would have to check on the credibility of that information. Right. This coming from a guy who represents an organization that never cites almost anybody that they quote, wow. almost any reference that they quote in any of their publications. One Mr. researcher Chair, said... One book on parenting said, you know, so true. but who wrote it? Who is it? Why? And he says the organization is transparent. No, you're not. Yeah. You don't no. tell us where any of this stuff's coming from. And he admits the publishers and the pioneers don't know this. How are you transparent if people don't know you're involved? Right. If the rank and file doesn't know, that's the opposite of yeah. transparency, Mr. Circuit Overseer. And that means you're quit. hiding it. And gotta remember, yeah. if anybody caught it in the video, where did this circuit overseer come from? He worked in the legal department. Right. At the headquarters. Right. Basically he was a company guy. Yeah. He he was very proud of that too. Yeah. yeah. I worked in the legal department. Mm -hmm. Told me that several times. But yet, um, him and the elder, they they both say that they had never heard about 92 to 2001 involvement with the UN. It, I'm the first person to tell them that. Right. I mean, really? He worked in the legal department yeah. at Bethel and he doesn't know. Right. Okay. And yeah, saying that, that. And he also said, we have a lot of interest in a lot of countries. Either he is really ignorant or he is really dishonest. Yeah. Either way, why would you it, Either way, it's like bad. That? Either way, it's bad. And then the elder tries to justify the NGO thing, saying, well, think about that name. It's non-governmental. It's a non-governmental mm -hmm. organization. And then he talks about, well, we have to have, like, if you go to court, you have to have legal representation to appear before the court, blah, blah, blah. He tries to justify their involvement. But for me, what I kept thinking the whole time I'm listening to that is, but you think it belongs to the devil. You think Satan is pulling the strings. Why would you walk into Satan's courtroom at all? Why would you go to Satan for help with another part of Satan's organization? That's like, okay, I'm trying to think how I can illustrate this. 
I have a problem <clears throat> with the mafia, all right, let's say. Uh, let's say I run a business and I'm being sh you know, shook down for uh, protection money, right? right? Like from the mob or something. So to solve this problem, I go to the mob, <laughs> to like the, the, you know, the mob's cousin for help with the mob. It's still the mafia. You're still dealing with the same people. So why are you going to Satan for help from Satan? Because That's, as he said, it's in line with the scriptures to try to work with them. Which he's actually correct. It does actually say that, but that's a contradictory mm -hmm. thing. If right. you say the Bible teaches that all the exactly. governments belong to Satan, and etc., <clears throat> why are you justifying going to them? I don't care what scripture right. you can read. Maybe if the scriptures say that you should pray for the governments and all that, so we have peace, maybe what you think they are is incorrect. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, if this is Jehovah's organization, why do we need to go to the UN? We don't need to. If this is Jehovah's organization, pray to God. He should be able to if protect it was his own from people. Him, he should be able to protect his people. Yeah. If it was truly from Him, why would you need to do that? You yes. wouldn't need to do that. So, and then they would actually be following the admonition that Jesus gave to be no part of the world. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> but as we can see, they are involved with a lot of things in the world. So they are, they're not, they're, they're not being no part of the world. They're, do this. they're speaking out of both sides of their mouth. Yes. The yeah. CO the whole time, the elder too, they're speaking out of both sides of their mouth. You, say you the can't least. have it both ways. Either it's Satan's system the UN belongs to Satan and you should have nothing to do with it or it's not and it's okay to be involved with it. You, There's no fence to walk. And I remember Watchtower used to say that, you can't ride the fence. If you're not with us, you're against us. He quotes, they used to quote Jesus. If you're not with us, you're against us. Uh, there is no fence to ride. Either it's Satan or it's not. You can't go both ways. But they're trying to walk that line saying it's okay to go both ways for the watchtower, but he says, the elder says, but we can't, they can walk in, he says, mm -hmm. but we can't walk in. Well, that's Do as not, I say, not as I do. Do as yep. I say, <laughs> not as I do. And the last thing on this clip that I had, in the very end, the circuit overseer says, well, the United Nations and the governments are there to protect human rights. And I don't disagree with that. But what you're saying is Satan is there to protect human rights because you're saying that Satan rules and runs and commands all these things. Wow. Then you have to extrapolate that out. Well, if he runs and owns and rules the governments, then he is instructing his people to protect human rights. Yep. Satan is wow. protecting human rights. That's what you're telling me. That's what he's telling me. That's what it's he's a pretty good about. logic. Yeah. And the organization <laughs> is transparent. It's transparent. Even though the rank and file don't know this yeah. stuff, it's transparent. It, oh, yeah, I wrote some things down about that. But it's not transparent when it comes to their references. It's not transparent when it comes to their finances nope. and their investment nope. portfolio. It's not transparent about, about that. It's not transparent with the database of tens of thousands of people who are abusing children. And even it's on, not transparent yeah. about any of those things. And even on a local level, they're not transparent when they send the letters to the body of elders and That's say, right. hey, yeah. you can only That's read right. the first two pages, but don't tell them about the third and fourth pages. Mm -hmm. Secret elders book, I mean, transparency, yeah. really? Some of the elders' letters do not post this on the board. Why? We don't want them to know about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, why, why is it all correspondence with the elders shared with the congregation if they're transparent? Yeah, yeah. and not so, only is, um, you know, just going to throw this in real quick. Um, you get in trouble for demanding transparency. So it's worse yeah. than just not having transparency. Yes. It's kind of like being at a corporation and demanding transparency and then they threaten your job or fire you. Yes. So if you try to go in there and say, I demand transparency, I looked this up, you know, I've realized you guys have an elder's book. You can get disfellowship for that or at the mm -hmm. very least marked. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a crime within the organization. Don't question us. Yes. Yeah. To even demand transparency. So it's even worse than not being transparent. Yeah. Well, that was clip number one. <laughs>
<laughs> we have many more to go, so let's roll the next clip and then we'll talk about that one. The other issue that I have is I, I've never been able to have kids. Mm -hmm. And so I have a soft spot when it comes to kids. Um, thank goodness um, now I have youngins running around the house all over the place because of being married to my wife. We've got grandkids. I've got eight of them now. I've had two since I was last seen you guys. Oh, yeah. But there <clears throat> seems to be a problem with child abuse in the organization. Mm -hmm. that's very disheartening that's and I have actually looked at the shepherd of flock shepherd the flock of God book I've seen it read it um, and the one thing that that it caused me some concern was if there is an allegation of child abuse the first thing that the elders are supposed to do is call the branch mm -hmm. to me I'd be on the phone with the police so I'm wondering why doesn't the organization direct the elders, if there is an allegation of child abuse, why don't they call the police? Well, there's a lot of legalities in that. Have you studied the Watchtower for this Sunday or next? Yeah, this. No, I have, I've actually next. not seen this week. Those all about yeah. child sexual abuse. All okay, of both articles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go back and read that. Yeah. Because what I what I found out was I will say I'll say this about child sexual abuse. Uh, we abhor it. We we try to protect our children. Um, in some states, uh, they've changed these laws. Uh, you don't have to report it. But wouldn't that be protecting somebody that did something to a kid? I would agree. That's not cool. But but here's the thing. But, but here's the thing. Whose law do you have a problem with now? Do you have a problem with man's law because it's not a self-report? Australia, you can have a sex with a child if you want to. And there's, there's no report in Australia. Well, obviously, because when the Australian Royal Commission came out, there mm -hmm. was over 1,006 so who's, cases. So whose problem do you really have? I have a problem with anybody that's harming a child. I do too. Or allowing right. it to happen. Right. Or covering it up. Yeah, and, and so I have 19 nephews and nieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, my wife is one of six girls. I have a brother and a sister. We have 19 nephews and nieces. I've got a problem with that, too. There's bad guys in every organization, including Jehovah's. Including, you know, well, see, and that's... The, you're pretty cool to talk to. Um, that's, that's you have what someone I, that comes out of prison. They, they get the word of God in prison, right? You know, they were a convicted child molester. They have a problem with that. It's something that usually it's very tough to kick. You know? Yeah. And, and we have a lot of articles about keeping mm -hmm. your child safe. Mm -hmm. Your Absolutely. child. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it just, it, and again, for the regular folks, it just looks bad because, you know, in the 70s and the 80s, Watchtower articles came out blasting the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. You know, really putting them in a bad light for pedophilia. Oh, sure. And, and then. And look up the numbers on the Catholic Church. The 1,006 you mentioned in Australia. You know, look up how many numbers the Catholic. Oh church. yeah, it's well, and, and that's or, or the thing. How about, how about like in the, the port, the, the Portland Archdiocese in Portland, Oregon? They have over three hundred cases of child sexual abuse there. So, um, just in that archdiocese, you know, there's they're bad everywhere, no doubt about it. You know, oh, yeah. and, and it just it just seems like they're, and and just please don't take anything I say the wrong way because I'm mm -hmm. just searching for for answers, but like with the two witness rule. If, if a child comes to you guys and says, hey, this guy touched me, it's not considered a, a sin because there wasn't another witness. Or, you see what, am I right on that? It wasn't another witness to view the child abuse happening. So if it, no one was there to witness, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you wouldn't report that? That's what it looks like. Yeah. Well, I'll say that... Uh, no, um, you're incorrect. Yeah. I'm what? You're incorrect on that. Okay, okay. So, um, we protect children. We actually have higher standards than, than the government, you know, on that. But, I will say that, um, uh, theocratically, yeah. Are there certain things in, in place? Sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, can we theocratically go after someone? But, listen, if, if, you, had a, if you had a child... And we found out that 
your child was your child comes up to you and says, you know, my my neighbor or my relative molested me. The first thing we would tell you is you have a, a form of, you can you have a right to to call the authorities. Well, yeah, yeah, I would. We, we would tell you that right away. Yeah. Before. Yeah. We would call the branch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, but now, those are just a few things. There. I guess I guess my other underlying thing on that is. I've always believed that Holy Spirit and Jesus keep the congregation clean. So when that stuff happens, mm -hmm. it kind of puts into question. Well, can I share a scripture with you? Absolutely. Yeah, it's 2 Thessalonians. <clears throat> so here's the congregation, right? Thessalonica. Just right. read it, Pamela. So 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2. Paul speaking. Here's a governing body member, right? So this is a like brother Let, brother Morris. Actually, you know, we probably put more weight in Paul since he wrote 14 books of the Bible. Do you want to read? Uh, do you want to read verse two? Uh, says not to be quick, not to be quickly shaken from your reason, nor to be alarmed, either by an inspired statement or by a spoken message or by a letter appearing to be from us. To the effect that the day of Jehovah is here. Yeah, and then it was verse 3. Let no one lead you astray in any way, because it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness gets revealed, the son of destruction. So way back then, you know, 1900 years or so, what was happening inside the congregation? And it looked like there were some folks that were saying some stuff that wasn't true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and matter of fact, he just said, don't be alarmed by what? And inspired. Don't be alarmed either by an inspired statement. What or does that by... mean to you? That would actually mean that if something was spoken by the apostles and they had the inspiration from Jehovah, not to be alarmed by that. Okay. So let's go to 1 John 4, verse 3. We'll see if that's, we'll see how, if there could be an inspired statement of truth, can there be a, one that's not an inspired you say, statement. Okay. First but, John four verse three. But every inspired statement that does not acknowledge Jesus does not originate with God. Furthermore, this is the Antichrist inspired statement that you have heard was coming, and now it is already in the world. So, can an inspired statement always come from Jehovah's organization? According to this verse. According to the scripture, it says, "But every inspired statement that does, does not, not acknowledge Jesus." Oh. So an inspired statement can come from who, according to that verse, besides Jesus and his organization? It could come, well, it says it does not originate with God, so it could be somebody else. Yeah. Saying right. they have an inspired statement. So the, it mentions there, furthermore, this is the Antichrist inspired statement, right? So, and okay. then if you look at the verse before it, right, this is how you know that the inspired statement is from God. Every inspired statement that acknowledges Jesus Christ as having come in the flesh originates with, with God. Verse 1. The loved ones do not believe every inspired statement, but test the inspired statements to see whether they're with God. You know, so... It says, for many false prophets have gone yeah. out into the world. And so, what I would encourage, and, I, and I'm speaking real to you, you know, what I, what I would encourage is wherever you're getting your information from, if it's having a positive effect on your spirituality or it's having a negative effect on your spirituality. Okay, so we watched that clip. And before we talk about that clip, I want to say, what, repeat what Jimmy just said. At, by the end of the clip, Jimmy said, I don't remember what I asked you. <laughs> I don't remember. What, what was my question? <laughs> because the guy, the circuit overseer talks around and around and around the question. Yes, he he never actually answers the question. He could be our next president. He said there are a lot of legal legalities to that. Yeah, a lot of legalities. <clears throat> All right, so get started. Jimmy refers to the problem of child sex abuse, which we all know is a huge problem in the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses right now. And Jimmy tells the circuit overseer that he's read the Shepherd, the Flock of God <laughs> book. And I really wish you guys could see the faces yeah. Oh, yeah. on these guys uh, while they're listening because 
They know Jimmy's not supposed to have this book, but they also have got to be aware that everybody's got a copy of this book now. Uh, and just the looks they give. And that's when the CEO responds, oh, well, there's a lot of legalities around that. And rather than uh, broach the actual question that Jimmy asked, like, what's going on with this? His response is, have you studied this week's Watchtower lesson, which is the one that the, what I refer to as the cop-out lesson, yeah. yep. where they actually try to justify not doing anything yeah. for these kids. Basically. Uh, so he tries to say, well, have you studied the Watchtower? The Watchtower is the problem, <laughs> but have you studied the Watchtower? Have you studied the Watchtower? And then he repeats that canned line that was in that Watchtower that you hear from every representative of the organization. We abhor child sex abuse. Mm -hmm. They always put it that way. We abhor child sex abuse. They always, use that, that, they always use that word, abhor. Abhor, yeah. yeah like, like, it, it's like the elder ambush. It's kind of a weird word, huh? With the doll with the string, where we talked about, yeah. <laughs> you always get the same answer in, in that Just case. like they've been trained to do. Yeah. Just like, like you they, said, program response. He, yes, he sounds programmed to say this. So he responds saying, well, we abhor child's... And then he says, well, you know, in some states, we don't have to report. How does that excuse you from not reporting? There's all kinds of laws that make all kinds of things legal or not illegal that Watchtower would say is wrong. Yep. So what this is, tells me is, well, if we don't have to report, so we're not going to report, we must be okay with what's going on. Right. Because if you weren't okay with it, you wouldn't care what the law said. You would do the right thing. That's right. But they don't do the right thing. And then I asked him when he said that, you know, some states you don't have to report it. And I asked him, how is that protecting kids? Yes. Yeah. And then he, he just basically agreed with me that it wasn't... I agree with you. <laughs> I agree. Really? I agree with you. But did you study the Watchtower for this week that yeah. tells us all the Watchtowers? And I want to talk about that, too. Um, I want to just give a little bit of a background, a brief background. The reason that that Watchtower lesson even came up is because of the problem that it's been for years. And one of the things that kicked it off was Jeffrey Jackson's testimony with the Australian Royal Commission. So if you haven't heard about that yet and you're wondering why, you know, it was in the Watchtower recently, this whole thing with child sex abuse, go back and start there. Jeffrey Jackson, Australia, Royal Commission. And um, another reason that this is a problem that I, you know, wanted to highlight is really the culture of Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, here they are, you know, being company guys, basically, mm -hmm. you know, acting like a company. Well, a lot of times when you're, you know, going to a press conference and you're part of a company, they tell you to keep everything that you can keep on the down low on the down low. It's called leaving it in Jehovah's hands. So this is something we've always heard of. Yes. Even though a watchtower won't leave stuff in Jehovah's hands if they're in trouble, they'll take you to court or do whatever they have to do or disfellowship you in a heartbeat. But if it's something that they've done to you as an organization and you, you know, have suffered as a byproduct of that, they will tell you to leave it in Jehovah's hands. And that's probably how a lot of this got as bad as it did because people were getting, uh, you know, children, people, women were getting raped or molested and they say, okay, well, leave it in Jehovah's hands. In other words, that means don't say anything about it. Leave it alone. Keep it on the hush hush. Cover and it here we are. up. Yeah. yeah. Cover it, it up. That's the, how I interpret that. And the whole time he's talking, it's a straight cop out. I mean, you think some of the things that he yeah. says, there's like bad that. guys in every organization, including Jehovah's. Now, before, and I'm going to talk about that. Okay, okay. Because that really, I hate it when they do that. Yeah. Before we even get to that, you brought up the Australian Royal Commission, and so did Jimmy. Jimmy brought up the Australian Royal Commission to the circuit overseer, to which he says, he says, well, you know, in Australia, 
Sorry. <laughs> and correct me if I heard this guy wrong. He says, you know, in Australia, it's okay to have yes, sex with kids and not say report. That. It's okay to have sex with kids in Australia and not report. That's I'm, what he said. I'm sitting there. And Who again, is this guy? I'm not trying to go on attack mode because I want to get as much information out of this dude as I, poss as I possibly can. Right. But when he said that, I just, in my mind, I lost it. Oh. I lost it. It was crazy. Whose law do you have a problem with? Whose law? Yes. Whose law do you have a problem with? I don't have a problem. Well, okay. I do have a problem with the fact that the law does not require uh, pastors or ministers or elders to report if it's considered uh, clergy, clergy, penitent right. privilege. Yeah. Yeah. I have a big problem with that. I think clergy should be mandated reporters I don't care if it was told in confidence, yep. just like an yeah. attorney can't care if it was in confidence. A psychologist can't care That's if right. it's in confidence. They go straight to the authorities. I think uh, clergy should have to go straight to the authorities. That so I have be. a problem with the law, but, yeah. but it doesn't matter if the law doesn't require it. What matters is what do you do? Are you going to do the right thing even if the law doesn't require it? Are you going to show right. love for this person that's bringing this problem yes. to you? Are you going to show love? Are you yes. going to be like Jesus and, and show love? No. No. All I don't, 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 don't want to mess with this. But not all things are advantageous. Advantage. So, yeah. So, the CO tries to push off the responsibility. Well, if they would pass a law that requires us to report, we would report. Yeah. As if that somehow takes the responsibility off of them. And it's then okay, that's man. when he starts doing the cop-out thing you just mentioned. And he said, well, you know, the Catholic Church has a far bigger problem than we do. Catholic Church has over a billion members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I think the numbers you're racking up, Watchtower, are probably... <laughs> are probably at least as bad on a per capita basis yeah. as the Catholic that's what Church. I was so that's number one. And number two, uh, you said the Catholic Church is part of Babylon the Great ruled by Satan. And now you're saying that well we're no different than the Catholic Church. All groups yep. have these problems. Well does that mean you're part of Babylon the Great too? Shouldn't God's only chosen cleansed organization not have these problems like you said to him Jimmy shouldn't Holy Spirit be keeping the congregation clean I've got something else to add to that too <clears throat> if you look at the Old Testament Jehovah punished Israel for making alliances with nations mm -hmm. <laughs> punished them yeah that's right he did. Well, how is Good Watchtower point. different today being an NGO you're part of Babylon the Great you're building an alliance yeah with a pagan or foreign nation. Yep. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Just the uh, the cop outs, the talking the around the question. The very the, it's great. I mean, one of the things that he said that I thought was very striking was when he talked about someone being in prison for having yeah. this problem. And then he comes back and says, that is something very tough to kick being a child molester, being a pedophile. He said, that is something very tough to kick. So when these folks come out of prison and there are, they've done repentance and they found their, and they states. found their right. way back right. into the organization somehow, you know, whether it be going out in service or eventually getting privileges, maybe. So it's something very tough to kick. Does this dude still have those thoughts and feelings? Is a kid still right. in trouble? Right. Is he totally re rehabilitated? According to the circuit overseer, that's a very tough thing to kick. Right. Well, shouldn't Holy Spirit be solving these problems? I mean, Watchtower tells you yeah. to pray away all of your other problems. Well, study the Bible more. Pray more. Go out and service more. Shouldn't that solve the problem? Because they say that solves everything else, which is why they don't encourage, they never encourage anyone to go to counselors, therapists, or psychologists. No. They do not encourage that. The only time they changed that was for suicide. In their article on suicide, they're finally saying on their website, the first thing you need to do is go see a professional, go get professional help. Well, thank you. Thank you for finally saying that. But with all these other problems, they do not encourage nope. going to therapists or counselors. Or they probably get in trouble for that. Yeah. They won't warn the congregation if this guy who was in prison comes into the congregation who was a child molester. They're not going to tell everybody so that he can be protected. 
Even right. the government has a public list yeah. of child uh, sex abusers, yeah. so you know where they live and to keep your kids right. away. And that's the, sort of the only people that the elders will tell are, from what we're hearing, are the parents of children in the congregation. Yes, only parents of children. Only the parents of the children. But nobody else. Nobody else. So what if you're what if you're a thirty year old guy and you defi- and you're single, don't have any kids, and you decide you want to throw a party at your house? Exactly. Wow. And everybody comes over, and next thing you know, there's kids, and this guy is here. Yeah. So because you weren't told that this guy could be a problem. He is now in your house where there's a bunch of kids at. What if you had families again. from other congregations that don't know this guy True. come to your house? Now, the parents with children in your hall might know because maybe they were told. But if you have people from another hall come over and you haven't been told because you don't have any children, you just put all these other people's kids at risk because you don't know. In light of transparency, Watchtower needs to tell everybody, everybody, in, the yeah. and everybody in the congregation. Yep. None yep. of this bull crap just telling the, the parents of the kids. Yep. Tell everybody. And the last thing that the circuit overseer said that's actually coherent, because then he goes off on this weird tangent that I didn't understand at all, is he claims that Paul was a governing body member. Which, first of all, the phrase governing body does not appear anywhere in the Bible. All right, that's number one. First of all. Does not appear anywhere in the Bible. The only place it even appears in the New World Translation is in their outline of what happens in the Bible. It says Paul, but what it says is Paul goes to the governing body over the circumcision issue. Even the New World Translation in their outline doesn't call Paul a governing body member. I mean, if anything, he was probably, what, a, a traveling overseer? He was more like a circuit overseer, yeah. maybe a missionary. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, but he, Paul actually had to go to what Watchtower calls the governing body to resolve the issue of circumcision. And this guy's a circuit overseer. Now, I don't know, maybe Watchtower's now calling Paul a governing body member. Are you guys aware of that? I'm not aware. Maybe that's what they're calling him now. Yeah. But even their own Bible doesn't I mean, say that. It doesn't call him that. And you can't justify calling Paul the leader of anything when he has to go to Jerusalem to the older men in order to get an issue resolved. If he was a governing body member, they would have come to him, not the other way around. I just found it funny that those scriptures that he was trying to share, 2 Thessalonians 2, 2 and 1 John 4, 3, he basically, in so many words, was telling me not to believe what I'm hearing. Yes, not to believe what I'm hearing, you know? And then it says that- Without the, actually coming out and saying it. Yeah, and, then the, and that these statements could come, these inspired statements can come from anyone. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. That's right, and then he says, the Bible says to test yes. <laughs> every inspired statement. Test the inspired statement. But we're not supposed to test what Watchtower writes to us, you're like Deasis yeah. said in the last segment, we're just supposed to take whatever they say. We can't question. Well, maybe, you maybe they try to make, for that. Maybe they're trying to get around that. Well, because watch the governing body admits they're not inspired. So you're not really testing an inspired statement because they're not inspired, but you can't test what they say. And if that's the case and you don't have to follow them at all. Exactly. If you're not inspired, <laughs> why am I listening to you? And then he continues to get out of the conversation by telling me, well, wherever you're getting your information, is it having a positive right. effect on your spirituality or a negative effect on your spirituality? He's not mentioning anything. Doesn't have anything to do with truth. This is yeah. why I forgot my question. He forgot because <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he's he's talking, he's doing mental gymnastics. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so basically, like I wrote in my he's notes, he's a great politician. He's getting yeah. out of he's getting out of talking about child abuse. You can tell that the training system for the circuit overseer is very similar to the training system for the elders that came to your house because they both do the same thing. Jimmy asks a very pointed direct question, which they never answer. They talk around it the entire time and try to deflect and evade and place blame elsewhere. Mm -hmm. They never answer the question. And that is, just pure, straight-up dishonesty. Yeah. But we're, it is. They're, they're, they're transparent. Yeah, but they're transparent. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah and, and Jeffrey Jackson was bold. Yes. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the end of that clip. So let's get into the next one. Before continuing with the video, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my Patreon patrons for the support that you provide for the videos that I create. If you find this video useful or informative, please consider becoming a patron and supporting the work that I do on this channel. I'd also like to take a moment to thank my activist level patrons for their generous support. Holly Miner, Andy Pohl, Gail Myers, Roger Kirkpatrick, Kimberly King, Amanda Rivera, and Deborah Lackey Hay. Thank you very much. Now that you said that, and we're talking about inspiration, I found something in the watchtower. And I just found this the other day. It's from the watchtower, no, I'm sorry, Awake, <laughs> number three, 2017. And, and, and one thing that I always try to do is when I look up information, I use the Watchtower material. Mm -hmm. I mean, I go back in the Watchtower library, and that's what I use. Mm -hmm. I don't go and look for apostate material. Mm -hmm. Okay, So right here in the Watchtower, it just says inspired. What does it mean? Simply stated, the expression inspired of God means the source oh. of the information in those writings is God. Okay. So, mm -hmm. the question before that, but if the Bible was written by men... How can it be inspired of God? And then the answer, simply stated, the expression mm -hmm. inspired of God means it's the source. Right. Okay. So, with that being said, to be inspired means that you're getting the information from Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. Which the Bible is inspired of God. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm on a train here. Okay. The Watchtower, February 2017, the study article, Who is Leading God's People? Mm -hmm. It says, Who really is the faithful and discreet slave? Mm -hmm. Paragraph 12, the, gov the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. Yes. Now, I agree. the reason I have a problem with that is we just found out that inspiration says the source comes from God. Mm-hmm. So, if the governing body is admitting that they're neither inspired nor infallible, I get the nor infallible, we're all imperfect humans, I get that. Mm -hmm. But when it says it's neither inspired, the governing body is neither inspired. Mm -hmm. That means if they're not inspired, according to the definition of inspiration in the Awake magazine, means that source would come from Jehovah. If they're not inspired, they're not getting it from him. Well, Please correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. I will say that where do all of our publications, what are they based on? Should be the Bible. Right. And is the Bible inspired? The Bible is inspired. There you go. So the governing body, and in Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 through 47, are they called the inspired? Faithful and discreet slave? Or what are they called? The faithful and discreet slave. So what is required of them? To be inspired or to be faithful and discreet? Faithful and discreet. That's what... And who wrote Matthew 24? Well, uh, Matthew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and who said the words? Jesus Christ. Right. Son of God. So, the king of God's kingdom expects the governing body to be what... To demonstrate what two qualities? To be faithful? Mm -hmm. And to be discreet. But doesn't... To be perfect or to be inspired... Well, that's why God gave us the Bible. That's what we should. That's what we should. That's where on. that's kind of breaking it down. Everything that, like, if you've got to test it, what do you test it with? The Bible. Right. So those men are sitting up there testing their decisions because they know the Bible directly. That was like Jehovah writing it down on paper because those men were directly inspired by Him. But them making decisions sometimes it takes time. And even Jesus said that the light would be brighter, that they would come to know things more. So the reason they can't be completely like the scriptures is because that means they would, they would make no mistakes, right? Well, yeah, I mean, well, see, that's what I, I was having a conversation with my mom yesterday. And I was like, Mom, I don't understand this because the Bible is inspired. It, it's God, you know, we know that the sure. Bible was inspired. Oh, sure. I have no problem with that. Yeah. The Bible's never changed. Mm-mm. However, my mom said, well, 
It's this is Jehovah's organization. Okay, mom, if this is Jehovah's organization, Jehovah never changes. Mm -hmm. Why does why are there so many changes in the organization? Well, think think about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah though. What if how did Abraham feel about those people? When they were getting ready to be Oh, destroyed. he said that there was, you know, hey, please don't kill him if there's like five, 50 people, 10 people, five people. And what happened with Jonah when he went to Nineveh? Oh, he thought that uh, they were going the, to kill him. They were and, done. Yeah. No, they were done, though. He was oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Die. He was ready for them to be You're destroyed. Die. Yeah, he was mad because they didn't get so, destroyed. Uh -huh. yeah. The principles in the Bible didn't change, but could have Nineveh been destroyed? Could have been. If they didn't repent, they would have been destroyed. That was it. Their day was coming. So, does Jehovah change? No, his principles don't. Does his way of handling people change? Sometimes. And it's always and balanced. Circumstances. And it's always balanced with all of his qualities. For example, mm -hmm. David killed a man, slept with his wife, uh, slept with his wife, then killed a man. Yeah. Covered it all up. What's the penalty underneath it to the law of Israel? Death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? So you're saying Jehovah changed them? Because he didn't kill him. Hmm. Yeah. Or the reality <laughs> is, is that Jehovah can balance all of his qualities perfectly in a way that we can't completely understand at times. And why is that? Because when I look at you, you know, I, I can't read your heart exactly, you know? Just like right. you can't read Shane's or you can't read mine. Right. We're just skin and bone and flesh and blood and, yeah. you know. And those anointed ones are the same. And, and you know, and I think the older I get, is I figure out the less I know, <laughs> you know. And Only so, I, I can. I, I can. Do, I, I mean, you know, it's like yeah. it's just it's sometimes that way. You know, because, I, because you know what we realize the older you know when you're young you think you got it all figured out. The older you get, you realize that there's that you know there's there's a lot more to life than, than you've been able to get get to in your life. But true. I, I'll, I'll just say, I'll just say that um, the Jehovah's Organization. You know, while while they are not perfect, they've never, they've always been honest. They haven't been claimed. They have not claimed to be inspired. Um, they believe the Bible is the inspired word of God, and they base their decisions off that. But even with that, if you want to do interesting research, do interesting research from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Because you mentioned the Bible hasn't changed, and honestly, I'm going to have to frankly disagree with you. <laughs> okay. One hundred percent. Because if you read the King James Bible. <coughs> <clears throat> How about this? Um, do you believe in unicorns? No. <laughs> but sure? the unicorns are listed in the Bible. But I think they were described as another. They weren't described. Uh, I think they were describing something else than a flying horse with a horn. But if you read the Bible for the very first time, most says popular Bible out there, yeah. it's, it says King unicorns. James. Yeah. Eight times. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It does. So the Bible yeah. for unicorns is what you're saying. <laughs> If you're just a layman, if, yeah, you're, not, if yeah. you're not raised around the truth, yeah, yeah, I can read the Bible. Class. The Bible <laughs> so the Bible has changed. Yeah, not not in the essence of it, it hasn't. But the Bibles that we know have changed because we didn't even have access to the Dead Sea Scrolls mm -hmm. up until the, the full Dead Sea Scrolls until the early '90s. Right. You know, our first version of the Bible, the complete Bible, came out in what '60, '61. You know, and that's why we've had to revise it a few times because we get these new we get these new scrolls. We find out, oh man, we should put Jehovah's name in the Bible six more times. You know, um, so the Bible hasn't changed, but our translations of it have because we have more accurate information now. Okay, now before we break this section down, the Aces made a very astute observation <laughs> that I wanted to bring out. Well, thank you. Yeah, um, the body language is incredible here, and it tells way more than what he's saying. He is so uncomfortable with the way this is going. I mean, you know, he's scratching his head, he's jumping around, he keeps putting his hand on his face. And, you know, if you know anything about body language, you know, I've read up a little bit about this in sociology because it's a hobby of mine. Um, when people start putting their hands over their mouth, it's because they know that they're not really quoting uh, you know, truth here. They, they know that they're not being honest. And if you look at his body language, he keeps kind of pushing back from the table. He is backing up from his own um, stance because he knows that he cannot properly 
defendant. A lot of times when you look at people who are confident, who know what they're talking about, they sit here and they go like this because they are ready to defend their point because they know that they're able to. But you don't see that from the CEO at all. No. You see him leaning back. You see him kind of putting his hands on his uh, mouth a lot. You know, hmm, his forehead is scratching his head. He's yeah, he's definitely moving around a lot. He knows he is in the wrong. He is uncomfortable. He's getting his ass handed to him by Jimmy over here. And but I'm he a wounded wants to go. sheep. I'm a wounded sheep with a little knowledge. <laughs> so, yeah. The word I would use is squirming. Squirming. Yes. He's, yes. he's very squirming. squirming. The whole time he's squirming in the chair. But I wish, I wish we could show you his face. Yeah. His body is squirming yeah. the whole time, but his face, he yeah. looks not only condescending. Yeah. Yeah. So but confident. like he's very irritated. The guy is very irritated. <laughs> I and would say irritated, uncomfortable, and it's fearful. Just, yeah, like you said, condescending. All of that. Just, I, think, I think my tactic was working. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you took the right approach because he couldn't. He didn't have what the elders had to be able to say. We got to get out of here. Right. Right. Because yeah. you were much more on the attack with the elders. With this guy, you were like, oh, well, I just have these questions and I don't understand. What about this? What about that? So he doesn't feel like he can justify getting up and leaving. <laughs> and this doesn't. <laughs> but he's you know, not comfortable. And this doesn't look like someone who has truth on his side. No, not at all. You know, he's scared to death. He is defending himself at this point because he has to, and he's just reaching for anything he possibly can. Yeah. And it shows. Okay, so Jimmy asks the circuit overseer. The same kinds of questions, the same situations he brings up as he brought up to the elders. And most of the time, what they say is pretty much the same, but here it gets a little different. The circuit over here doesn't say the same thing that the elders said. So Jimmy quotes the Awake's definition of inspiration mm -hmm. and then reads from 2017 Watchtower where the governing bodies say that they are not inspired or infallible and in effect Jimmy's like well so if they're not inspired why do we have to listen to them really I mean that's the bottom line that we're getting at here and this what's the circuit overseer say well he he agrees you know because in that in that awake magazine there, there's a part where it talks about that the source of the inspired information comes from God right okay so if the source is coming from God and that's what inspiration means then I went over to the watchtower and it's like okay they're not inspired okay then how are they getting their information? Right. He says, when he says they're not inspired, he just, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Which is different from what the elder said. Mm -hmm. And the elder saw it in the watchtower and flat out denied it. But they're so, inspired. No, they're inspired. Which is how we were taught to think. We were taught to think of them as being inspired. Mm -hmm. But the circuit over here knows he can't. He can't make that statement. He nope. knows they're not inspired. So he tries to wiggle out of it. And he says, yes, but doesn't all our information come from the Bible? Mm -hmm. And isn't the Bible inspired? And the elder tries to pick up the torch here and says, well, but since the Bible is inspired, the governing body tests everything with the Bible. Mm -hmm. Which is fine, but if they're not inspired, I can test what I believe myself. Yeah. I don't need them to test it for me. In fact, <laughs> to put your own salvation in the hands of someone else, a preacher, a pastor, a governing body mem member, an elder, that's something Watchtower, when I was coming up in the organization, would say was one of the problems with what they referred to as Babel and the Greater False Religion, that they go to the church to hear what the pastor says, but they never take ownership of needing to know it themselves. Mm -hmm. But here the circuit overseer, well the elder actually, is saying in effect, that's what the governing body members do. They test it all for us, so we don't have to test it ourselves. But like we all said in the last round table, uh, if they're not inspired, then their opinion isn't any better than mine. That's right. I can use my own opinion and understanding of Scripture to determine what I believe. I don't need them if God's not talking to them. That's right. And then he, then he was, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, it, this makes me think of a Scripture. We were told this all the time growing up as J-Dubs. Ecclesiastes 9, 
And if I'm not mistaken, Ecclesiastes 9, 4, 5 says, do not put your trust in nobles. Mm -hmm. That still applies today. So, and, and the other thing he was talking about when he brought out the fact that the faithful and discreet slave even exists, he's like, well, what are their, what are they supposed to be? They're just supposed to be faithful yes. and discreet. They're not, he didn't say, it doesn't say inspired, faithful and discreet. It just says faithful and discreet. So that was another point he was trying right. to make to prove that they are not inspired. Exactly. So they're not inspired. They only have to be faithful and discreet. They only have to be faithful and discreet. But we have to listen to them or we're going to be disfellowshipped and ejected from the congregation. Yep. That's the biggest problem I have with the not inspired thing. If God's not telling you what to teach, which is obvious, by the way, it's obvious God's not talking to the governing body. But if he's not, then you have no place to tell anyone else that they have to think or believe the way you do. That's right. Um, you know, I think about the scripture that they base the whole faithful and discreet slave um, doctrine on, and it's from Matthew 24, 45, and it says, Who really is the faithful and discreet slave whom his master appointed over all his domestics to give them food at the proper time? That was a parable that Jesus used in Matthew 24. And it wasn't supposed to be any more than an illustration, a teachable story. It was a parable. And so what the governing body have done is they have used that to self-appoint themselves. Yes. And it's not true. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Just go back and read Matthew chapter 24. And then remember that scripture at Ecclesiastes where it says, don't put your trust in nobles. So you got to seek this out for yourself. You got to think for yourself. Don't let them determine it for you. Don't let them put their stamp of approval on it and say, okay, you know, it's good. We checked it out. No, yeah. you are obligated to do this yourself. So from the it, Bible, it's like the whole other sheep thing. When you actually read the scripture in context, it's obvious that Jesus is talking about non-Jews when he says, I have mm -hmm. other sheep that are not of this fold. He's not separating a heavenly and an earthly class. They have to jump through all these exactly. mental hoops to get there. And they do the same thing with the faithful and discreet slave thing. So then Jimmy, Good point. Jimmy says, but the Bible hasn't changed. Jehovah hasn't changed, so why has the organization changed so much? Now, the elder tries to skirt this. He says, well, think about in Sodom and Gomorrah, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And then with Jonah, Jonah wanted Nineveh to be destroyed, but God didn't destroy Nineveh. So Jehovah's principles don't change, but the way he applies to certain people. It applies to certain people is different. And then the CO jumps in and he brings up David and says, yeah, God didn't kill David. And it's a valid point. You know, I'm, I'll give credit where credit is due. If there is a God who has all of these qualities and is on omniscient and can read hearts and knows everything, you wouldn't expect the application of justice to be a by the rules kind of a thing. You would expect, well, God understands everything about everybody in every situation and can apply it differently. That's cool. That's fine. Yeah. I, I get that. Makes sense. But, but then, then the circuit overseer says, but I have to take, I have to disagree with you that the Bible hasn't changed. He said, let me be frank. I 100% 100% have to disagree. Because, and again, he's not wrong about that. He says the Dead Sea Scrolls gave us much older copies of the texts, and it did change a number of things in the Bible. That's true. But see, that, for me, calls into question the whole, because I hear this a lot, on the channel in the comments from true believers, not just witnesses, but for all kinds yeah. of religions. Yeah. They say that God has protected and preserved the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Dead Sea Scrolls made it clear that that is not the case. Exactly. That there's a lot of things that have changed that they had to go in, just like the circuit overseer said, they had to go in and update and revise because the Dead Sea Scrolls showed that the texts they were working with before were inaccurate. Right. 
that they were wrong, about, they had been changed. I think about that scripture too that makes this whole you know discussion even more confusing. Um, God said, I have not changed. But yeah. we evidently see inconsistencies. Inconsistency mm -hmm. so. Why can't God protect children in His congregation? Why can't God protect the Bible so it's preserved and never changing? People out in field service. Why can't God yeah. protect the people out in field service with the angel in mid-heaven? See, there's all these questions that call into question all of the doctrines that Watchtower and the uninspired governing body teach are absolutely true. That just cannot be true based on the evidence. And I'm not telling people that they shouldn't have faith. I'm not telling people that they shouldn't use the Bible as a guidebook. Everybody's got to make their own decision about what they believe. I'm saying that your belief system needs to be influenced by the reality of what we know and not by a fictitious storyline that you've constructed in your head to protect the belief system you already have. Wow. The external evidence should be feeding and growing your belief system so that it's always in line with evidence rather than you having to build barriers to protect your belief system from the evidence. And that's exactly what Watchtower does. They try to build barriers in the minds of witnesses so that they ignore and reject any evidence against their position. And that is extremely unhealthy yeah. for dishonest. everyone in that organization. Again, but we're transparent. But yeah. we're transparent. <laughs> yeah, we're transparent. I, just last thing I think is, so the Bible hasn't changed, but our translations of it have because we have more accurate information. But in, you know, in the beginning of the of that conversation, he was just trying to say the Bible hasn't changed. Yeah. Yeah. And then he says, or, or I'm sorry, he said the Bible has changed. And then here he says the Bible hasn't changed. So he's back and forth. Yeah. Both sides of his mouth. And I'm sorry, it gets a little confusing trying to uh, rehash this yeah. because he's playing mental gymnastics and yes. it's actually hard to keep up. Yes. He's good. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you about <laughs> this the, guy's a pro. I'll tell you about the good part. If I didn't know what I know now, this circuit overseer was so good at double speak and things that I would have been back at the Kingdom Hall. I've been back, you know, in field service next week. It's Had like, you oh. not known what you know. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, my God, he's, like, really good. So Smooth talking his way oh, through yes, the whole thing. Totally. Yeah. And, and, you know, being in sales, I recognized right. what he was doing. Yeah. And I was like, wow. For most of the folks that they normally call on, he's probably checking them off the box. Like, yep, got them back on track, got them back on track. And when you yeah. think about that, I mean, it's totally dishonest. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's yeah. totally deceptive. Yeah. yeah. Very deceptive. You came armed with the facts and just obliterated him. Yeah. It's obfuscation is what it is. Yes. He tries to say so much without ever really saying anything. At least not without ever without ever directly answering the question. Yes. And that is not what I read in the gospels when people walked up to Jesus and asked him a question. A question that they thought was going to be uncomfortable for him. And the one that comes to mind is when the Pharisees are trying to catch him off guard and they walk up to him and they say, is it lawful to pay head tax to Caesar or not? Mm. And he's like, Jesus doesn't <laughs> obfuscate the issue. He doesn't walk around it and uh, you know cl coin. try to cloud it. He says, <laughs> bring me a coin. Mm. And they bring him the coin. Whose image and inscription is this? Well, that's Caesar's. Well, then pay, therefore, Caesar's things back to Caesar's and God's to God. Drop the mic. Drop the <laughs> coin. He gave a direct yeah. answer to a direct question. Yes, you pay your taxes. Bold and And he courageous. didn't care mm -hmm. that it was going to make the crowd upset that he's telling them they need to pay taxes. Because that's the fact. That's the truth as he understood it. But the elders in the ambush video and the circuit overseer do not do that. They don't hold up the coin and say whose image and inscription is this. They don't give a direct answer to a direct question, which tells me they're not Christ-like at all. No. Yep. Not in no. my opinion. No, you're right. That's not bold or courageous at all. They're taking their cue from Jeffrey Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> don't answer the question. Dance around it dance as around much it. as you can. Yeah. Evade. Well, we got another one they dance around here soon. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get into the next clip. Last thing I want to say <laughs> is the circuit overseer, which I know he was 
he was just being funny. He says, the older I get, the less I seem to know. And it is true that the older you get, the more you yeah. realize you don't How know. Could be. So that that's that's humble but what occurred to me when he said that the older I get the less I know I'm like the governing body don't know shit because <laughs> they're all like 6,000 years old you know? oh wow that's too funny I just oh, they forget yeah <laughs> but we should be more humble as we get older I agree with that I just thought that was funny alright let's roll the next clip and then we'll talk about it so would that explain and then there was one more thing I came up with Jesus being our mediator. When I asked Brother Carr and Brother Morse about that, they totally agreed that Jesus was their mediator. Mm -hmm. Do y'all feel that way too? Pray through Jesus to Jehovah. You say in Jesus' name. You know, just, it, yeah, when it comes Jesus, to prayer. Is Jesus our mediator? Um, yeah. Okay. So. so with that said, I have the Worldwide Security Prince of Peace book. Mm -hmm. I just need your help figuring this out. It says, was the mediator between Jehovah God and mankind in general? No. He was the mediator between the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the nation of their fleshly descendants. Likewise, the greater Moses, Jesus Christ, is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. He is the mediator between his heavenly father, Jehovah God, and the nation of spiritual Israel, which is limited to only 144,000. So, with it going back there and says, likewise, the greater Moses, Jesus Christ, is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. The reason that confuses me is because you just mentioned that we put the publications out you know based on... Yeah, and I'll read you the scripture that... Does it mention 1 Timothy 2 in that paragraph? Uh, 1 Timothy 2.5. Okay, let's go there. 1 Timothy 2.5. Because you got to put it in context too of what it's trying to say. So, I agree. Mediator of the new covenant, absolutely. He made a kingdom for government, government, you know, with, with his with his first century apostles. Okay. This is where we use the word mediator. Maybe we should use a different word. Right. First, first I Timothy. Probably do now. <laughs> first Timothy two five. Go ahead, you want to read it? Yeah, yeah. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, a man. Jesus Christ, okay. Christ Jesus. Okay, very good. So, we, we agree there's a mediator. Now, I could be slightly off on this without doing research, but now read the next verse. Who gave himself a corresponding ransom for, for all. Oh, oh. This is what is to be oh, witnessed to in its oh. own due time. Who gave himself a corresponding ransom for all. What does it say in verse 5, though? It says... He, uh, he's a mediator for who? Mediator between God and men. But not for all. Is what you're saying. Is that how you read it? When I is read it, you, you when read it? I read it, I read it as being men as everybody. Okay. That's but why do they I use it. a different word in verse six? I don't know. Well the ransom applied to everyone. Yeah. But Jesus oh, only so mediated. mediated for so his ransom, people. we say he's a mediator in the fact that he gave his blood, offered the value of his perfect human sacrifice. Mm -hmm. For Jesus everyone, Christ. yeah. If it went through him, yeah. Absolutely. That's all mediator means. Mm -hmm. Mediation, like when Jesus hands back the kingdom or everything to Jehovah, mm -hmm. he's mediating between him and all the individuals that were under him. Yeah, yeah. So he so offered. It, it's that. a terminology mm -hmm. he's using for. Yeah, because it just looks really bad. Because when it says that you know and he you know is what? not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. Well, and he, and, and he's not in the fact that. How about uh, well there. Help can, me out. Can I, can I see the uh, front of that book real quick? Too? Yeah, 86. 86, yeah. I need to go like, and design this with you. Yeah. Right. And they've had to reword some things oh, because yeah. they did come across it. As, absolutely. As, but it uh, just looks bad, guys. It just For folks that are, aren't as knowledgeable as you guys are mm -hmm. with this, well, it just looks bad. And, and, and you know, one thing, too, though, that I, I and we could sit here and see all I did there, this is what I did. Is I read it in context. Right. Well, I, I totally believe the reading anything in context. Yeah. So you can take yeah. one paragraph and make it seem anything you want. Oh, yeah. Totally agree with that. And so, how did I know that you were reading from Second Timothy? I knew that yeah. because I read the Bible. Right. And because I go to meetings and I feed myself spiritually. Mm -hmm. 
through the, through not the inspired slave, but through the faithful and discreet slave. I guess I always believed that, you know, throughout my whole life, I just always believed that the Holy Spirit ascended down on the brothers. Absolutely. Gave I, them I information, them helped them, and then the government. Were two or more gathered in my name? Right. You know, I figured that, you know, like Absolutely. the governing body, I feel like that they were inspired to come up with this, our new light, new information, things like that. Based off the Bible. Yeah. But, but the, the Bible is the inspired word of God. The Bible is the inspired word of God. I, I totally believe that. And, and, and that's the thing. That's where I'm trying to base all my stuff on is, is the Bible. You know, if it's in the Bible and someone can help me with it, help me understand the context, Absolutely. I'm cool with that. Yeah. That's why... Jehovah I haven't mind people questioning. No, there's Bible writers that questioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the, the Berean, Malachi, the Bereans Haggai, were looked the Berean, yeah. the Bereans were looked at as an example. Examining the scriptures. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You should. <laughs> but here, let me tell you, Jimmy. Um, I've been in truth mode all of my life. You know, right? There's about a year, maybe six months, that mom was inactive, but. Here's the way I really do feel, and I, the more you see it, the closer we get to the end of time, I feel just like Peter said, where in the world would I go? Yeah. Where in the Luke world? Six. You look at every other organization, you well, look at all the problems that people have when they don't have the truths that we have, even just the basic stuff. There's millions of friends out there that probably could not have this conversation, but that's all right, because they see the fruit. Jesus said, just look at the fruit. If, there, if the one thing you can learn the most from is how look at what they're producing. Mm -hmm. Producing a peaceful, loving, nonviolent, morally clean, just a, literally a paradise on earth right now in, in perfection. That's yeah. the way I feel. Yeah. I mean, that, that I, helps and I can me. appreciate If that. I've got any questions, I just, I'm like, what in the world? So, I guess. Okay, so Jimmy hits the circuit overseer with the same question that he hit the elders. Do you believe that Jesus is your mediator? And to which he said. The elder, the elder, the coordinating body of elders said nothing. He never answered the question directly. Right. But the CEO says, um, yeah, I would say so. Yep. Yeah, of course. Who doesn't? think that Jesus is their mediator. Watchtower doesn't think that Jesus is the circuit overseer's mediator, so Jimmy, of course, brings out the reference to show that Watchtower's publications do not place uh, Jesus as the mediator for everyone, but just the anointed, just 144,000, which I found out recently someone quoted a reference from a 2014 Watchtower. Yes. That says the same thing. So this is an old October white. study issue. October. Okay. So look that up if you if you want to. October study edition, 2014 Watchtower. Okay. It says the same thing. This is not old light. It's not an old light, new light situation. They still teach it. But even the circuit overseer didn't know. Because when you actually read the Bible. Of course you get the overwhelming impression and message that Jesus is our mediator. Yeah. It's yeah. all over the New Testament. John 3.16. Yeah, exactly. It's all over it. So it, it's very counter-scriptural to hold the opinion that Jesus is not your mediator, which is what Watchtower teaches. So to try to prove the point, <laughs> the circuit over here goes to 1 Timothy 2, and this this is really irritating. 1 Timothy 2.5, where it says that there's one God, a mediator between God and men, a man, Christ Jesus, comma, who gave himself a corresponding ransom for all. Oh. Now, any normal human being, English-speaking person who read that statement would see the clear and obvious tie between both halves of that sentence. It's the same sentence. It's not two separate statements that he is the mediator between God and men, Jesus Christ, and that he gave himself as a corresponding ransom for all these people. The circuit overseer tries to say that because he used the word, because he said one mediator between God and men, 
and then says that he's a corresponding ransom for all, that because he chose to write different words in the two halves of the sentence, that he's talking about two different groups of people. In the same sentence. In the same sentence. Mm -hmm. No one just reading that sentence would get that impression. And if he was correct, Watchtower is still wrong because he said between God and men. And Watchtower teaches that women can be anointed too. So if you're going to play that game, if you're going to try to say that the word they chose separated things out, well, then you have to read the literal word, which says between God and men, which means women. Bye, ladies. Yeah. Sorry, ladies. Bye, Felicia. You're up. If you take that tack. But it's obviously not what the verse means. And like you quoted John 3, 16, it's obvious we're all grouped together. Like we talked about earlier, the whole other sheep thing where they try to separate out groups. It doesn't exist when you just read the Bible in context. No, it doesn't. In fact, I want to read the scripture, 1 Timothy 2, 5. So follow along in your Bibles. <laughs> <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> right? For there is one God... And one mediator between God and men, a man, Jesus Christ, like you said, comma, who gave himself a corresponding ransom for all. Now notice here, it didn't say who gave himself, you know, a corresponding ransom for all mankind, but the 144,000, you know, are still going to mediate for you guys, or verse 5 doesn't say anything about um, you know, one God and one mediator between God and men and, you know, 144,000, you know, you guys are going to have the special privilege here. It doesn't say anything about that. So for him to insert that, that, uh, you know, would have anything to do with the anointed class or any other thing outside of this is literally going beyond what's written. You're literally reaching for scriptures that aren't connected to this and trying to tie them all together to build a point that doesn't even exist. That's a good point, because there's nothing in the verse, if he's right, that because he's using different words, he's talking about different groups of people, there's nothing in the verse that says the group of people he is talking about is nope. some anointed group of 144,000. Right. He could be talking about the 12 apostles, for all we know. Exactly. We don't know who he's talking about. Mm, exactly. So where are you getting, like you said, you have to tie in, weave in the spaghetti mess of <laughs> scriptures from all over the Bible to try to come to this doctrine that is not clearly stated. Just more mental gymnastics. It's just mental gymnastics. And, and, and then the CEO says that when they're talking about the word meter, well, maybe, maybe we should use a different word. <laughs> and then the elder says, oh, they probably do now. Well, they've changed so much in the world translation, they may as well change that too. (laughs) Yes, more mental gymnastics on their part. Yes. And then the circuit overseer says that he feeds himself spiritually each week. And what I'm thinking while he's saying that, I'm like, yeah, but who are you, what are you feeding yourself with? Right? You're reading Watchtower publications. It's not like you're going to the Kingdom Hall and just reading long passages of the Bible to discuss. And the if scrolls. the governing body, yeah, if the governing body isn't inspired, isn't what you're reading the commands of men as doctrine? Wow. Isn't that what Jesus said? Yep. Love it. If you're not inspired, wow. it's just the commands of men as doctrine that you're following. That's exactly what Jesus condemned, if I remember. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> he condemned it quite strongly. Wait a minute. <laughs> but that's what they do. That's what they do. And then the CEO says, you can take one paragraph and make it say, yeah, you can, you can take one paragraph and make it say anything you want to. You can also take one verse from Timothy and apparently. make it say anything you want <laughs> to, apparently. <laughs> so Watchtower does this so much. You know, they'll say something and they'll have their own take on it. And it'll be completely an error of what everyone else yeah. knows to be true. Yeah. And then the elder tries to sidestep the whole thing again, and Watchtower does this a lot. You know that what we are saying is true, says Watchtower, because look at the fruit it produces Mm -hmm. in our people. And the elder goes through this list of things. Oh, well, Jehovah's Witnesses are peaceful. I forget the others. Peaceful stood out to me. They're peaceful. They're kind, whatever, you know, good people. But while he's listing off the things that he believes are good, 
about Jehovah's Witnesses. I was writing down all the things I think are bad th that these doctrines teach people. Child sex abuse cover-up, uneducated, self-righteous, obfuscating, family-destroying, martyr-creating, no natural wow. affection practicing people. Wow. So sure, <laughs> if you cherry-pick the good, because you can find good, in, and we talked about some of the good things we were taught in mm -hmm. another round table. You can cherry pick the good, but you can't ignore all the garbage, all of the bad, and try to only present the good as the fruits that your group produces. You have to take it all. And the fact is, yes, it does find produce something good some good, some good. But then there's all these bad things it produces too. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to acknowledge those. You're not being honest. Yeah. And that's true, you know. And if we're going to use that logic with the Jehovah's Witnesses, then why not use that same logic with every other religion? Because yep. you can find good and bad in them too. Yep. Jehovah's Witnesses are really, at this point, no different than any other religion. They haven't distinguished themselves. Not in any good ways. No, no. <laughs> They've got some bad ways in which I've found them to be quite different from other religions I've been to uh, since exiting. But yeah, not in any good ways. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's Roll. it for this one. Yeah. Roll the next clip. What in the world? So, I guess, no I, comparison. I mean, that's why, you know, right now I've kind of I got me a little... Can, can, I, be, can little, I be blunt with you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't care about a beard. You can have a beard if you want a beard. Well, that's what I was thinking because the Bible doesn't prohibit it. Yeah, I, I don't really no, care about a beard. the Bible doesn't talk about yeah. that. Yeah. But we can't have privileges, though, if we have a beard. It well, just depends on where, where you're you at. live. Yeah. It totally is up to... So if I had a beard and I could have a congregation, could I have privileges? No. no. Not in this area. But, you know, if you, you were in... Why, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Okay. So... I'm just curious. Why did, why, did, uh, why did Jehovah have the Israelites have a beard? So that could be a different identifying mark to other people. Oh, okay. And, and in Egypt, all the magic practicing priests, what did you recognize about them in the Bible storybook? And they had beards. Mm -hmm. I think, hold on. Go, go get, go, you got a Bible storybook? I do. <laughs> no, do I have the old one? So no, I don't have the old one. Shaven heads, remember? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's Isn't it interesting? The Egyptians were always... <laughs> Isn't it interesting? But in today's time... Beards are not looked like that, looked upon like that. Yeah, I understand. You know, it, they have a stigma of following the trend of the world in our area. But see, what I found Just out, what I found out was the beginning of the beard situation and why it was put in place in the organization. Yeah. And that was the fact that Rutherford had a problem with it, and because he was trying to distance everybody from kind of following Russell, and so. There was. An so you, what you're saying is that Rutherford wasn't perfect. Oh, definitely not. He wasn't. <laughs> okay. But but the thing is, is he put things in place, well, even with him not being perfect. Cool. He put things in place that we still do today. Big difference. Though. Yeah. At that point in time, Russell, Rutherford, Nor, what were they? Presidents. Oh. There's a difference. Who's the president of the Washington Bible and Track Society? I don't know his name. He was one of the, he's the black guy that gave a part. He's listed as the president. Not anymore. But there's a governing the body. The most recent. The most, most he, recent. He turned 80. Okay. He's actually Brother Corcoran now. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I knew and there was still one there. Legal but. entity, you know, just because it's a corporation that we're forced to have, you know. Right. But, you know, now we don't. Wait, we're a corporation? That, oh, absolutely. Always have been, yeah. He's a corporation. Yeah. Incorporated, yeah. you have to legally to exist as an entity. You have to be incorporated. Watchtower Bible Track and Track Society Incorporated. That's all of our stuff. In, front of every... in order for us to have, uh... so aren't corporations businesses? No, oh, no? no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, because there's a difference. Charity. There's, there's a nonprofit. There's a nonprofit. Yeah. And a for-profit organization right. out there. So we're a nonprofit. Right. Yeah. But here, but here's the interesting. But here's the uh, here's the the real. Well, that's why we have that's why we have an annual meeting. That's even a congregation. <laughs> that's that's, a, that's actually a business model. Yeah. Because we have annual meetings for Aflac. We we have to do that. You have to legally. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm learning something new. I'm learning something new today. But here, but here's the here's the thing. And I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna ask you, and I, I'm only asking you out of. I feel like that we can speak freely with one another. Absolutely. So how would you say? 
how would you feel like you're doing as far as getting to meetings? Oh, here lately, <clears throat> it's been pretty scarce. I've been going up to Virginia to help my mom and dad. Sure. They're older. Responsibility. Totally agree. And when the summer hits, you see four and a half acres here, and you see how much weed eating I haven't been able to get to. Yeah. So I've been very, very swamped sure, with sure, a sure. lot of stuff here. How about your ministry? Um, I do a little bit of um, informal mm -hmm. witnessing, but I have not been active in the regular ministry. But I would really encourage you, this is just me, you know, and I feel like I can back it up scripturally, is to get back into a good spiritual routine. You know, remember we're told to exercise our faith, mm -hmm. right? And so when you exercise a muscle, what happens? They get stronger. And when you don't? Yeah, it gets weak, mm. it's flabby, yeah. it turns right. into fat. It goes the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, instead of going this way, it's going this Gravity way, right? Gravity has a yeah. to work on it, yeah. So spiritually it can happen the same. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, and I'm not trying to tell you where you're at, but I know that if you're not, you know, you hear, you've heard about the great spiritual temple, right? Mm -hmm. You know, well, Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25, do not forsake the gather. That's our spiritual temple. That's it. It's where we get fed by Jehovah. You know, are we perfect? Are you going to have brothers brother that sometimes, or a sister that sometimes says something insensitive? Sure. Absolutely. That's why we're called brothers and sisters. Yeah, that was really upset yeah. about that situation last week, or when it was, because I went. And I was literally asking questions, telling the brothers how yeah. devastated I was, and then I go in to get this, and... Uh, it's fine. But I, w but I was recording the conversation, and then when I went in, and I can pull it up, but... When I went in and came back out, and after I listened to the recording, those brothers were calling me an apostate. Oh, this is a, he's an apostate. Yeah, I see it too. Oh, that's what education. He said, that's what education will get you. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I can play it if you want to no, hear it for I, no, real. We believe you. I mean, this is very rough around the edges. He's a good brother, does a lot for the friends, but he's very, sometimes I don't think he quite grasps exactly what's coming at him. So sometimes he'll make, you know, misjudgment. He's He's got that. Yeah, I mean, they both agreed yeah. that at that moment I was an apostate. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm probably just not used to people coming up with things that they're not familiar with. I'm trying I'm trying I, to I, you're fine, you're soften fine. the blow a little bit I for understand. them because they're kind of limited. Both of those brothers are kind of limited. Well, I understand and, that. And, and let me just, let's just say the roles are reversed for a moment. No, I'm okay. just going to throw this at you. Okay. You tell me if I'm way off. I'm not going to be offended. Okay. Because, you know, sometimes, <laughs> guess you can talk to my wife. But there's sometimes that I'm way off, right? So, okay. actually, he thinks I'm way off in my love for college basketball teams. Yeah. All right. For the first time, you get a direct answer to a direct question. I do. So, what happened there? Well, um, says something about me having a beard, and the CEO says, uh, I don't care about a beard, and it doesn't bother me. So, then I... Asked him, well, if I was able to come into the congregation, could I have privileges? Because we talked to him. He says that there's other brothers that have beards. It depends on where you live. It depends on where you live. Yeah. 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 So I asked him straight up. So if I come into the congregation um, with a beard, can I have privileges? No, no. Yeah, no. First time. No. <laughs> first time in this video, we have a direct yeah. answer. Yeah. So. And yeah. that. The elder, uh, and I hate it, I hate hearing it, this just irritates me so much about these people irritate me, <laughs> that he says that in our area, a beard has a stigma of looking like you're following a worldly trend. To who? Only Jehovah's Witnesses in this area would ever look at someone with a well-kept beard or even someone with an unkept beard yeah. and say that they look like they're following a worldly trend. Nobody thinks that. Who thinks this? Nobody. Now, it is true that uh, in, like we said in one of the other roundtables, so like in some sales positions, in some corporate positions, they want you to be clean shaven. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's fine for that environment. Yeah. But on the street, you don't find people who look yeah. at someone or with Christians, facial hair. We're Christians, not corporate. Talk so about the corporate thing. The New York Yankees, they have a rule on their team, no facial hair. It's the only team in baseball, and that, I'm thinking, it's the only team in baseball that says they need Interesting. Every, yeah. There's a couple of guys, uh, one, of the, one of the starters for the Atlanta Braves didn't sign with the Yankees because he liked to keep his beard. 
Think? So, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> well, you they know. must have a governing body. I don't know, yeah. but. Now you 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 came up with a good counter to the whole worldly trend stigma thing too. Yeah, it did. Um, you know, well, first of all, I wrote my first letter to the governing body that mm. I ever wrote was about my beard because I was denied reinstatement for having facial hair. Now, <clears throat> one thing I was thinking of watching that video, looking corporate is going along with the world just as much as having a beard. I mean, if you're going for a corporate, you know, trendy, clean cut, uh, sophisticated look um, to have a good company image, I mean, isn't that kind of going along with the world just as much as having a beard is? Yeah. You look to like street. politicians, yeah. attorneys, you know, people that are not generally looked at as being very honest individuals yeah. if you walk around with a suit. And that depends on where you live, too. And I know, yep. uh, like Jimmy, we're out in the country. And when I lived in the country yeah. of Louisiana, anyone in a suit was immediately suspect. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yes. They were immediately suspect. And I walked into a gas station once in Louisiana. I was pioneering back then. And I'm wearing a suit because I'm on my way to the meeting. And the lady looks at me and she gives me like this untrusting eye. And she says, are you a preacher? Or a politician. Because <laughs> wow. you were only one or the other. Yeah. So if you're going to say if you're a that. JW, it's the same thing. Yeah, well, that's true. But if you're going to say that the organization looks at each local area to determine the appropriate dress and grooming for that area, then no country congregation should ever wear suits because of how people in suits are not trusted. They're looked at as corporate, as the man, as the the IRS, the man. as you know, uh, preachers or politicians. They're not looked at in a positive way. And if you look down on somebody because they have a beard, that says more about you than it does about them. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Something's not right with that. There's something not Jesus-like. Uh, there's something not loving about that to me. The Pharisees. Yeah. yeah wanted to slap labels and requirements on people. Meanwhile, Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners. Yeah. And he didn't care what people thought about him because he hung out with the people that everybody else looked down on. So why does Watchtower, if they're trying to be Christ-like, care what the local community thinks about the people that are Jehovah's Witnesses as long as the people that are Jehovah's Witnesses are good-hearted people who want to be Christ-like. Why does it matter? Jesus didn't care. Yeah. He hung out with prostitutes. He didn't care. That's so right. why do you care? Another thing that bothered me um, about the video, um, this part in particular where the CO says to you, um, well, you know, and I don't know if you caught this, Jimmy, um, you know, well, we want to try to get you back in a spiritual routine. Or he said something to the effect of, well, you know, in trying to get back in a spiritual routine, you know, you basically want to follow the rules. And this kind of reminds me of what um, happened to me when I wrote my letter to the governing body regarding my beard because I was denied reinstatement. And they basically said, well, you know, the same thing about spiritual routine. And well, we want to see how your spirituality is doing. Well, what does a beard have to do with having a spiritual routine. I mean, that was the thing that I caught out of that yeah. immediately. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this uh, you know, there for a while he talks about corp we talked about corporations and things like that. And so what he was saying on that, you were saying that Watchtower is right with everything that CEO was saying. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all churches, all congregations, whether they're Jehovah's Witnesses or not, they have to register as non-profit yeah. corporations for tax reasons and legal reasons. And he wasn't wrong about the annual meeting because Watchtower Bible and Tract Society is a corporation. The board has to meet every year. That's a requirement under the law. It's just Watchtower makes a big fanfare event out of it. Whereas most corporations, they just go to the boardroom and they discuss whatever they need to discuss. And they keep the minutes, the notes of yeah. the meeting because that all has to be on file for tax purposes. Yes. So on this, so we get into all my notes I have. Now he goes into another subject deflecting onto me. Um, doesn't want to stay on the subjects we were talking about. And he's, I said in my notes, here come the mind games. Because he's now getting ready to make me feel bad about right. my spirituality. Right. That I'm not doing enough. Mm -hmm. And so this is. Never doing enough. Yeah, this is where he goes into that. Yay. 
The reason you have questions is because you're spiritually weak, because you're not in what he called a good spiritual routine, right. which was the phrase we all heard as witnesses. Mm -hmm. Do you have a good spiritual routine? Which what that means is if you were sticking to the indoctrination process, you wouldn't be asking these questions. And that's true. When you keep people really busy, really indoctrinated, you keep them away from anyone who doesn't think the way they think. They live in that echo chamber. It's true. It's harder for them to break out and think on their own. So, of course, the circuit overseer wants Jimmy to get back into that routine and stop asking questions. Because that falls in line, <clears throat> that falls in line with exactly what they said about the two elders. They said they are not used to people coming up with things that they are not familiar with. Yeah. They are kind of limited. Why are they limited? <laughs> Why? Because they're only dealing with indoctrinated members of Jehovah's Witnesses yep. who know the answers that are already printed in the publications, and so they don't ask a lot of questions. Yep. Now, compare that. Uh, when I went to a progressive Baptist church for about a year after I exited, after every sermon, after the Sunday sermon, they had what was called a talk back where the who, whichever pastor gave the sermon that day, they uh, we'd all go to the gym and they had these chairs set up and the pastor would sit down and basically just get flailed <laughs> by the congregation members who took issue with something that he or she said because it was a, a man and woman, you know, a couple co-pastors. And they, ever, they weren't they weren't harsh. The people were, they were nice, but they had problems sometimes. They didn't agree with some things because this is a progressive Baptist church. This is not an, an evangelical church. It was uh, very open to people having different opinions and ideas. And they would sit down and literally let people tell them, this is why I think you're wrong in front of the whole congregation. Oh, wow. Wow. And the pastor would very often acknowledge their point of view and say, well, I understand why you feel that way. And occasionally would offer a counterpoint, but didn't always feel the need to prove them wrong. Sometimes they would just listen to them. And I remember sitting at that. And I was like, damn, <laughs> this would never happen <laughs> at a kingdom. Well, let's have a talk they back. Last five minutes. <laughs> Anybody who wants to question the elders, let's go to the back school <laughs> afterwards and let's have a chat. And let's put all the elders on the stage. Like, no, no, put all the elders no, on the stage. Exactly. And treat it like a watchtower study. Raise your hand. That's literally, <laughs> that is what it was because yeah. they had a mic and they would pass the mic. I have a question. I have something I want oh, to say. Man. And they would pass the mic and I couldn't believe <laughs> what I was seeing. That'd be funny. And that's one of the reasons why I had so much respect for this congregation, even though my theology is different from right. theirs. Right. I had an enormous amount of respect for this group of people and for the pastors who they had no problems being questioned by the people in the congregation. Yeah. Hmm. So a member of said Babylon the Great has no problem <laughs> answering questions. Yeah. Wow. Mm, but who's who's but, more Christ-like? Yeah. <laughs> interesting. All right. Well, I actually I want to read another scripture because this really ties in with this last segment that we just saw. Um, you know, he was basically saying, like you said, because you have questions. Um, because you are using your critical thinking, that something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with your spirituality, which I've said this before, to me is victim blaming. Right. But um, the scripture that actually supports what Jimmy was doing and supports what you all would do, and also goes back to what you, know, you guys were already talking about earlier in the video, is uh, 1 John 4.1. I want to read that. It says, uh, Beloved ones, do not believe every inspired statement, but test the inspired statements to see whether they originate with God. So, test. 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 And this, the, uh, the elder said, test. Yeah, they, the they actually statement. brought they, that they scripture out that. earlier in the video. Deasis, I can tell you have a good spiritual routine. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> you broke I've out got, the Bible well, well, multiple times. So, wait a minute now. I, I, I don't know. I'll um, take you seriously after you shave. Okay. You cut that hair, too. Right. Samson. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
He was bad too, apparently. Yeah. Oh, apparently so. Yeah. And Samuel. Oh. All of them. All those long haired, hippie, bearded Bible kids. You Nazarites ain't going to make it, man. <laughs> rebels. Rebels is what they were. We yeah. have we have had ask, people asking about what hair care products. Oh use. God! Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hair gel. <laughs> I was surprised. I was like, I don't know. I'm gonna have to ask you. Yeah, that's a good. It's question. like two dollars and fifty cents at Walmart. You get like a big glob of it. Yeah. You <laughs> five gallon bucket. I can see when you got that much hair, you don't want to buy the top shelf stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, Tony can afford top <laughs> shelf hair gel because he's got like two little patches. And yeah. That's it. Well, we digressed on that one, didn't we? We sure did. That was that's fun. Okay. All yeah, right, so fun. that's the end of that one. Yeah. And then the circuit overseer starts chatting about sports and things like that. Yeah. So we're going to roll the last clip, which I'm going to tell you in advance. Yeah. It ends abruptly because apparently the iPad had had enough <laughs> of this garbage. <laughs> And it just shut off. So Jimmy didn't turn it off. The iPad said that was it and shut yeah. down. It probably ran out of memory or something. Ran out of space. Yeah. But so it's going to end abruptly, and that's just what happens. So let's roll that. It's for the best. Yeah, for the, for the best. <laughs> You know, so I'm something I'm that way with my Braves. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I have a tattoo they on my got, back of the Braves. They got a, they got a squad this year. Yeah, they do. Good. Six yeah. and a half game lead right now, and I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm a New that. York Mets fan. Have pity on me. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm I mean, sorry. You guys are all messed up. Okay, so, so, so you up. like strawberry. <laughs> so, you know, I grew up That's in about South it. Jersey in the 1980s, all right? And the, 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 the one span of time when the Mets were great mm -hmm. for like a five-year window yep. is when I was formulating sports, right? And the Eagles had Randall Cunningham. Oh, yeah. Exciting. Sure. Yeah, it was exciting. So I became a Philadelphia Eagle. I could have been a Giants fan. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, Super Bowls and, you know, and I came an Eagles and a Mets fan. Mets fan. That's a horrible choice. That is, that is, <laughs> yeah. Because I'm a Cowboy fan, too. Oh, my gosh. I'm a cow oh. Cowboy and Atlanta Braves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what's going to make you guys leave? Oh, my God. Um, but no, okay. So let's just say, let's say the rules are reversed. And you haven't, to, to, to your credit, you admit that spiritually, you know, the, your commitment as a, as a Jehovah's Witness, making sure you get the meetings, the biblical command, ministry, things like that, hasn't been what you It hoping, needs to be, yeah. Yeah, what you hope it would, would be. And so, and you're visiting someone that's in that situation. And they, and they maybe mention things that sometimes that line of thinking can be influenced. I'm not saying it was, but it can be influenced by apostates. Wouldn't you agree? Could be. Yeah. So, you know, maybe for a couple of but it, a couple of dear older brothers who've had a lot of experience with apostates too. You know, especially back in the day. You right. Know, it's kind of a dying thing to a degree. You know, it used to be that you had all the conventions and they'd have signs. Yeah. And, Picketing you know, outside. Mm -hmm, they would be. You know, now it's a and lot. They, you don't see that. No. As much. It's more of an online attack now. You know, but um, you know, I, I could see maybe how they would think. Oh man, is he? Hope he didn't get influenced by that, you know? Maybe oh, they there. didn't. They didn't. They didn't say it like that. They but just, maybe that was inside. Like, I see it too. Yeah. Maybe. They, it too. And maybe that was where, you know. But. but it, it is what it is. I mean, say, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm honestly just trying to find the truth. I'm trying to find Do truth. Do you feel like you've had anything resolved just with us talking? A little bit. A little Why don't bit. Why you come to the meeting on Sunday? But hear my talks. I can do that. And the, and the watchtower is right yeah. down right down the alley. Yeah, of, of what we child abuse, of right? what we talked about. I'll be it's, doing that. Yeah, the summary. Yeah. So I mean, it's almost almost. Uh, maybe it was Holy Spirit that guided this conversation today. Yeah, I don't. Well, I did pray before <laughs> we had this conversation. Um, and you know, I know you guys got to go. I would um, I would love if you guys would have been able to stay a little bit longer because I had a few more things I need cleared up. Well, um, and, and we're and we're willing to have those discussions, but. <clears throat> None of it will matter as much. The biggest thing you can do is to get your spiritual routine back. It's the biggest thing you can do. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's not me saying it. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25, right? You right. Say, that, that's, that's God's word. That's right. the inspired statement. You know? And when's, when, when did you feel the strongest in your life? Spiritually. Uh, when I was back in Waynesboro, pioneering. Going to all the meetings? Oh, yeah. Engaged in the ministry, pioneer. Yeah. You felt the strongest. And spiritually, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. See, you're exercising your spiritual muscles, my friend. The truth is as complicated or as simple as you want to make it. 
really is. Well, see, I believe that because of the, you know, I whenever I was talking with my buddy, um, who I kind of had a Bible study with the last two years, I was just trying to tell him, look, this all just makes sense, Tiny. Just look at it yeah. right here. It just makes sense. And then all of a sudden, there were some things coming up in my own <laughs> brain that I was like, wait a second. You know, like, you know, Jeffrey Jackson going on the stand at the Australian Royal Commission mm -hmm. and saying that he thought it was presumptuous for us to think that we were God's only channel. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? I, I've, I worked in the legal department. I'm very familiar with it. Yeah, that, when I seen that, mm -hmm. I was like, what? Let me ask you a question. We're not? Scripturally. It, let me ask you a question. Before you ask me that question, when he was asked that question, because mm -hmm. it's on the phone, he, when he was asked that question, my thought would have been, yes, we are. But he didn't say, yes, we are. Okay. He said it would pre be presumptuous for us sure. to think that we were God's only that's channel. A humble, that's a humble remark. Let me give you. Let me give you a scriptural example. Okay. Jesus sends his disciples out, right, and they're curing the sick, and they run across these other people, and they're able to expel the demons. And you remember what his disciples said, right? Tell them to stop doing that. <laughs> yeah, those other people were doing it. That's right. Jesus was followers weren't the only ones doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do some research on yeah. that one. Yeah, let me look it up real quick. It's in the gospel account. Let me see if I can find it. And if not, I'll have Shane text it to you. Is that okay if I can't find it yeah. right now? Oh, let's see. Expel. Expel. Oh, yeah. Mark 9, verse 38. Man, I love that new search feature. Uh, it's awesome. It makes me look smart. <laughs> when I'm not. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone expelling demons by using your name, and we tried to prevent him because he was not following us. Okay, but Jesus no. said, Do not try to prevent him, for there is no one who will do a powerful work on the basis of my name who will quickly be able to say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Oh, oh, yeah. So was Jesus the the channel where his disciples, the ones he was using to... Did you see how much that circuit overseer's face and demeanor just brightened up? And I know you guys can't see his face in the video, but how he was bouncing around, he was... You could hear it in his voice. You could hear it in his voice. How much happier he got when they started talking about sports? Yeah. It was a whole different aura that he put off. Thank God I don't have to defend Watchtower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was enjoying that part of the conversation. Yeah. Well, see, you know what that tells me? That as big that of a was like problem the... as I have with this guy and with the elders and with all of the behavior we've shown, underneath that indoctrination, there's just a normal dude. Yeah. True. There's just a yeah. normal guy who loves I think that was the first time basketball. he breathed. Yeah. And, <laughs> that whole video. And if we could just get through those layers, maybe it, maybe we need to use sports to get the brothers out. <laughs> if we could just get through the layers of indoctrination, there's good normal people underneath this. So I don't want anyone to look at this guy and think, well, this guy is just an, a terrible snake. No, he's an indoctrinated member of a high control. Absolutely. Group. Probably yeah, from childhood. I mean, he was cutting jokes. Of, yeah. You know, and he, he seemed like he could be pretty cool. But when he's having to go put the Watchtower hat on, yes, totally different, totally totally different type of personality. Like and if the person you are when you're in your religious mode is not the person you are, not your true self, right. when that's turned off, you, you need to realize that you're faking your way through your belief system. Mm -hmm. It's an indoctrination it, that you feel obligated to present. It's not who you really are. Yeah. And when I realized that, the, I remember the first time I walked into a kingdom hall and realized that I had a fake smile well, when I was not happy. Mm -hmm. And it finally registered in my brain that I was doing that. And that was a big turning point for me because I 
knew if I'm actually happy, I should feel happy. I shouldn't have to fake it, and I shouldn't feel the need <laughs> or the obligation to fake happiness in front of people that are supposed to be my spiritual family. Right. Wow. But that's what we all did. And I felt the same way going out of the Kingdom Hall. You know, they always say that if you come to the meetings, you'll feel better, you'll be happier. Well, when the meetings were over and I was in my car <laughs> driving home, I was like, Okay, I don't feel any different than I did two hours ago. Mm -hmm. I'm still upset about the day or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just didn't get that feeling towards the end. My relief came when the last wow. prayer was over. <laughs> 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 Especially towards the end. There. Yeah. Especially towards the end. Yeah. So I really wanted to point that out. that The CO's whole demeanor changed when he's talking about sports. And you can see that the normal guyness of the guy, mm -hmm. of the dude, yeah. whenever he's doing that. But then... He puts the hat back on. He puts the hat back on. And uh, let's see, he starts talking about apostates. And it's funny, he calls them a dying breed. He <laughs> says that you used to see them with signs at all of the conventions and all that. Well, I think at the Love Never Fails convention, I think there's a huge revitalization yeah. of yeah. the signs and the protests. Yeah, That's a lot. He said of the signs things. and the protests were a dying thing, that it's more of an online attack now. Well, and that makes sense this, because you can reach thousands yeah. of people online where you might reach two people with a sign. Yeah. So that I mean, definitely that doesn't sense. mean that we're losing. No, not but at all. Some of the experiences that I've seen on Watching Watchtower for folks that have done the protests over the last couple of weeks, they have had people come up to them and talk. I had one today say, yeah. put a message on saying that a reporter came up and talked to one of our activists. Awesome. And so they're going to go from there and maybe do a story on child sex abuse. Good, Good thing, deal. too. Good deal. And, you know, the soul dying breed thing, I mean, that's not true. We're strengthening, growing in numbers. We're doing better than we ever have, thanks to the Internet. And uh, to the point, and I could be wrong on this, but um, there have been a couple of conventions here in America that have been canceled. I know yeah. of two. Yeah, I know of two. I, I think two. one in Canada. I'm also, not sure about the one in Canada. Kim and Mikey have a, yeah. a video on, on that. They're keeping track. You guys are watching, by the way. We love you. You guys yeah. are awesome. <laughs> yes. Seriously. Yeah, you guys Kim are and like Mikey are great. Yeah. Yes. Yep. They're like everybody's parents. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Babbling crap yep. society. <laughs> Watch our Babbling crap society. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, he's great. And she's so sweet. When she yeah. comes on, hello everybody. <laughs> 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 Beth, Beth can nail oh, both Beth of their can voices. Nail the impersonation. Just, uh, she's got. She needs to do an impersonation video because she's really good at that. Okay, so he talks about the apostasy, and incidentally, this channel in the last ninety days has reached about four hundred thousand people. Like that's unique people. That's not views. That's unique YouTube users. Four hundred thousand people that have watched. Nice. It. We so thank they, you. Think yep. about all of the conventions I would have to crash to reach uh, 400,000 people. Wow. You know, so what a difference. That's there why. a million JWs in America? Right, yeah, right about a million. million. Yeah. So, yeah. About a million or two so, million? Yeah, it'd be hard for me to reach it yeah, elsewhere. Yeah, difficult. And so Jimmy then says that he's trying to find the truth, and the elder asks, well, has anything... <laughs> We've had in this conversation resolved any of that, and I love Jimmy's <laughs> response a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. But what he meant, and what they thought he meant, I'm not exactly <laughs> saying. The bullshit. And then this thing in my head. I'm okay. thinking, hold on, I'm thinking in my head. No. <laughs> Y'all ain't done nothing for me today. Now, this yeah. is telling. The circuit overseer says, maybe Holy Spirit guided this conversation. But here's what I want to ask. How is that possible when nobody prayed? Wow. They didn't again, pray. Again. Just like the elders yeah, didn't pray with yeah. Jimmy. The circuit overseer didn't pray with Jimmy. So where was this Holy Spirit coming from? You know? Apparently Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Apparently Jimmy's he the was provider the exposing of the, the truth here. Yeah. Well, sure. and like he said, them. well, and then the CEO says the truth is as complicated or as simple as you want to make it. Wow, that couldn't be more true for Watchtower. The clear waters of truth. <laughs> the That's truth is as said. complicated or as simple as you want to make it. Love it. Yeah. That's wow. Well, yeah. It's like what that should be Watchtower slogan. <laughs> <laughs> And then Jimmy 
says, well, I'm sorry you guys have to leave. I know you have to go, but I have a lot more questions. To which the circuit overseer says, none of that matters mm -hmm. as much as your spiritual routine. Yep. That's Watchtower's answer. Put the questions aside and follow the indoctrination. Yep. That they want you That's back in the hamster what that wheel. Means. Yeah, they want yeah. you in the hamster wheel. That's none of that matters. None of that truth matters. None of it. If you don't fall in line, that's what he was basically saying. Yep. You're only asking these questions because you're spiritually weak. It's gaslighting, is yeah. what it is. Yeah. 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 And then, <laughs> then you bring up Jeffrey Jackson again. Can't help it. He's my go-to boy. Oh, he is. He's my awesome. go-to boy. He just he, he wussed out so bad. He, did. he wussed out. He's so helped us so much. And he, here's the part. Jimmy complains about him again and asks the circuit overseer, Are, were you aware of this? To which the CO smugly replies, <laughs> I worked in the legal department. I'm very familiar. Yes. And then Jimmy complains, but he didn't say yes. Jeffrey Jackson didn't say, yes, we are. To which the circuit overseer says, well, that's a humble reply. And let me explain why no, no. it's not a humble reply, it's a lie. <laughs> no. Because if one of Jehovah's Witnesses asked Jeffrey Jackson the same question that he was asked by the Australian Royal Commission, his answer would be very, very different. He would not evade and deny and say it's presumptuous for us to think we're God's only channel. No, he would say, yes, of course, we're God's only channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His answer and to one of Jehovah's line. Witnesses would be different from his answer to the Australian Royal Commission, which makes what Jeffrey Jackson said to the commission a lie not a humble reply. Now, if one of Jehovah's Witnesses came up to Jeffrey Jackson and he said the same thing, well, it would be presumptuous for us to think that, then it would have been a humble response. But we all know that's not what would yep. happen because that's not what Watchtower teaches. Absolutely. And the last part, Mark 9, 38. The circuit overseer is trying to defend Jeffrey Jackson's behavior. He goes to Mark 9, 38 where there's someone who is teaching in Jesus' name that is not with the apostles, and the apostles are upset about this, and they want Jesus to go tell them to stop, and Jesus refuses. Can you read that? Because I want to make sure we get the context. Or you've been reading so many scriptures today. <laughs> I sure can. Yeah. <laughs> We've shared more scriptures in this roundtable than I think we have in the others. We're getting back into yeah. our good spiritual <laughs> There it is. Hey. <laughs> um. 938? 938, yeah. Okay. It says, John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone expelling demons by using your name, and we tried to prevent him because he was not following us. Keep, keep going. Keep going, yeah. Keep going. But Jesus said, Do not try to prevent him, for there is no one who will do a powerful work on the basis of my name who will quickly be able to say anything bad about me. So there you go. The CO tries to use that verse where Jesus said, don't try to stop anybody as long as they're speaking my name, who, if they can perform a powerful work, as he says. Mm -hmm. The CO tries to use that verse to defend what Jeffrey Jackson said, that it would be presumptuous. And you know what? The circuit over here is actually correct that it would be presumptuous and that this passage does show that saying it would be presumptuous to think you're God's only channel is is true. That's right. The passage does show that's presumptuous. The problem is that Jeffrey Jackson doesn't really believe it's presumptuous. At least the Watchtower does not teach that it's presumptuous and certainly never references this passage in Mark to demonstrate why other religions are good too. Because yep, right. they speak in Jesus' name, they perform powerful works in Jesus' name, which today would probably be like, so, you know, social support or helping the homeless or children's hospitals, you know, all the stuff that Watchtower doesn't do. <laughs> that Jesus as did. long as they're doing those things in Jesus' name, don't try to prevent them, because that's what Jesus said. But they never reference that verse wow. or that passage. That's a good point. For any other church, they only apply that to themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's wrong on every count. But he was right to apply that verse against Watchtower's teaching, even though that wasn't his intention. Yeah. So Good job, after Steve. that, yeah. after that scripture was read and he talked about that, uh, of course, we all seen the video go out. 
But then after that, um, I'm trying to recall what had happened. He may have said a few more things about me getting back in a spiritual routine. Mm-hmm. And then we just um, decided that was the end of the conversation. Yeah. And yeah. they ended up leaving. And I guess the follow up on that, just for those that don't know, he invited me to the meeting. He said, come hear my talks. And so, <laughs> so that's going to change everything. Yeah. Come, come, why don't you come to the meeting? <laughs> yeah. So I did. I went to the Sunday meeting. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. You said you were going to go. Yeah. yeah. And the reason that I went is because I'm sitting there thinking, all right, I'm still dealing with Bobby Big Shot guy. Right. <laughs> so if I go to the meeting and he's already said he doesn't care about the beard, I went to the meeting with my beard. First time ever. That was right. kind of cool. Right. And the reactions that I got from folks was just unbelievable. They say, hey, nice to see you again. Where have you been? And they look at me and they're like, then th- their whole face changes, like a judgmental look <laughs> mm-hmm. on their face. As soon as they see the beard. Yeah. Happy. Wait a minute. But, ooh, no, what's wrong with you? But the, the, big, <laughs> the biggest reason I went is because I wanted to stroke the CEO's ego. He comes to my house, big shot, going to get this wounded sheep back in the fold. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to fail. And, and he will think <laughs> that he did a great job getting me back to the meeting. You trying to line up a third one, aren't you? Uh, you yeah, <laughs> never know. Stay tuned. There may be more to come. But what was funny, though, I, you know, a lot of folks have said that, oh, Jimmy, well, the elders knew about your cigarettes, so they're going to try to DF you. Okay, they, they may. It hasn't happened yet. But during this meeting, the CEO and the elder, the coordinating body of elders, didn't say a word to me about it. And then when I went to the meeting, they didn't pull me in the back room and say anything about it. So I don't know what moves they're getting ready to make, mm-hmm. but I'll be prepared for the next time it may happen. And if it happens, we'll keep you guys posted. <laughs> yes. When the letter comes, yeah, I want us. We're going to share that letter because yeah. I want everyone to see what gets said in these letters and how these things work. So, all right, maybe we'll keep this on camera. Maybe not. If you were willing to go. Would you record? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no question. <laughs> record the judicial committee? Yeah, if there's a way I get a, a mic on here. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll there's a, yeah, yeah, I will record No it. question. We'll, we'll get you set up with all the hey, gear. I think know. I'd love to go. I'd love to check it out. <laughs> hey, look, you know, I mean, two witness rule, you know, we'll, we'll vouch for you, man. There we yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that wraps this part up. So let's close out with our last words what do you have to say Jenny? well it's been an interesting last three weeks um mm-hmm. battling the elders and battling a co and just looking at all the discrepancies and everything that we were ever taught um it's funny now that i've learned more things since i've been out i can look at the mental gymnastics that they're mm-hmm. doing and and one thing that's really whenever the co used to come into the kingdom halls it, it was always a big deal, all right? His talks, I loved all the CEO's talks when I was growing up, and you always looked forward to their talks. Yeah. So when I went to the Sunday meeting and I listened to his talk, I had a different viewpoint on it this time. And I was like, wow, he is really dumbing down this information. It doesn't was, have the same magic. No, it was yeah, so it elementary. It, yeah. He was trying to put jokes in where they didn't need to be at, and of course everybody would laugh. Um, but wow. it's just, it was just very different listening to this time. So, but we continue on. We do what we do here: expose Watchtower, and yeah. just go from there. That makes me really curious. I don't know if I could ever go back and sit in on a meeting, but I haven't been to one since I exited and I'm curious to know it's really what, weird now yeah how would I react to it now you would think that you were probably in third grade wow wow honestly <laughs> all right well Deasis, what about you what I enjoyed about this video and the recordings is that it it kind of does our work for us I mean, it really, you know, and yeah, this is true. not me being mean to you elders or the CEO, if you guys are watching this, but this further exposes the incompetence of the organization, especially with regards to its management. 
I mean, they they don't know anything. They're not able to defend anything because they don't know anything. And this really just puts the spotlight on that even more. Yeah. 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 If you so, go off script, they're lost. If you go off script, yeah. yes. Wow. Yeah. 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 Basically. <laughs> like like they said about the two elders that they're not used to people coming to them. Yeah. They the, were they're not used to people coming to them with questions essentially. They are not used to people coming up with things they are not familiar with. Right. And they're, of course they're not. They are kind of limited. Yeah. Oh, they're definitely limited. Yeah. There's no question. We all were as witnesses, but we didn't know it because we lived in an echo chamber. Yep. All we ever heard was the confirmation of what we already thought. We were never challenged with information or questions that did not appear in the publications. They sent us into battle unarmed to fight in a battle that they would never fight themselves. Yeah. yeah. And well, you're right, they call it spiritual warfare, but they're totally unarmed. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting down. Or they might have a butter knife. But yeah. oh that's right. That's <laughs> that last thing. Yeah, the butter knife. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So the last thing that I would want to say is that I really appreciate Jimmy, that you, not only that you've been recording these things, which is great for everybody, it's great for people that need to see this. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate your perspective as a salesperson, because Jimmy sells insurance, in case we didn't say that this time, and that he could see all the tactics mm -hmm. that the circuit overseer were, was using that were sales tactics that he's been trained to use. So sales while Watchtower insists awesome. that they're so different and that they're so honest and upfront and forthright and all these things that they'll claim, Jimmy spotted in the circuit overseer's behavior, which came from training from Watchtower, mm -hmm. that he was basically a sle uh, I shouldn't say sleazy, because like I said, he's probably a nice guy underneath it all. He's basically a salesperson for Watchtower. Yeah. is what it comes down. He's a re regional sales manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, yeah, that's, that's who he is. Whenever I tell well, anybody that the CEO came to visit me and they're like, what's the CEO? I'm like, okay, he's, he's kind of like a regional yeah. manager. He really is. Yeah. He really is. And it's a good way to put it. But I also want to say again that once Jimmy got him off of Watchtower and just talking about sports and basketball, that the guy seemed like he's probably a good guy. He's a really yeah. good guy. He's just buried in the indoctrination. If we were still in, what would our personalities be like? Yeah, it's true. We'd probably yeah. be saying some of the same things he was saying yeah. with the smugness of thinking we had the truth, you know, and everybody else was wrong. Yeah. You know? So we are trying to help. Yeah, we are. All right. All right, we got some shout outs before we're done. Yes, if you <laughs> noticed at the very <laughs> beginning of the video, uh, we have a new feature. Our little jingle. <laughs> uh, and that is in thanks to Frank Rada from Australia. He contacted me and said that he would uh, be willing to write a jingle for us. And I was like, okay, well, let me get with John, see what kind of words we want to use. And left it at that. Well, the very next morning, I wake up, <laughs> I have a message from Frank. And I play it, and I was like, oh, this is too good. I like okay, Frank. Okay, so, so the jingle woke me up quicker than my coffee did that day. <laughs> that has never happened before. I think I listened to that jingle probably like... I love his comments on watching Watch. Yeah, that. yeah. I, I could not Seriously, have come up with he is like better fire. words. It, it was yeah. great. So, Frank, thank yeah. you thank so Frank. much thank for the Frank. jingle. Yeah. We really You're do awesome. appreciate that. Yeah. And if anybody wants to know, uh, it's Rockabilly, the Memphis Suns. And they have a new release called Hats Too Tight. And John will stick the description in the below. Yeah, I'll put a so link So everybody in can go to his page and listen to his music. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you enjoyed it, let us know. Also, shout out for our Watching Watchtower Facebook group. Link is always in the description of the videos now, so you can find it down there. And check out Deasis channel, which if you search for his name, spell it for us, Deasis, because always get the S's backwards. <laughs> I know. <laughs> D I A S I S S. Two S's on the end. Not D I A S S. Yes. But there's Bastards. a link. <laughs> there's a link to his channel in the description too, and you can yeah. get to it, or just search for his name if you know how to spell it. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it. If you like this video, don't forget to click like. 
Be sure to subscribe if you're not already and absolutely hit the notification icon so that you'll be notified when I release new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you. The round table is talking to you. Watchtower having a clue. JW's falling like flies. Waking up from the years of the lies. The round table is talking to you. Clearing the way so you can leap to The round table won't tell you no lies The round table are regular guys The round table will show you how the watchtower lies